All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the September 12th, 2023, regular meeting of the Dearborn Heights City Council. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you please take roll call? Yes, Dave Abdella. Here. Hassan Ahmad is absent. Moby Doon. Here. Nancy Breyer. Here. Robert Constant. I think he's in the rest. He's here, he's coming right okay, back well, in. We'll keep an eye on him. And then Tom Wenzel. Here. Um, Mr. Chair, you have a quorum. Okay, thank you very much. You're Next up, we have our council chair pro tem position replacement. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and take nominations at this particular point. Is that Robert? Yeah, Robert. Bob's here. We can just have a um, motion to open the nominations. Right. Okay. Council chair. A chance to get settled. Go ahead. Uh, I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council open up the nomination for position of council chair pro tem. Second. Okay, motion made by Councilman Baydoon and seconded by Councilman Constant. Is there any discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carried. Uh, next up, we're going to go ahead and take uh, nominations. Council Chair. Councilman. I uh, nominate Constant. Uh, Councilman Mo Bay Doon for the position of Council Chair Pro Tem. Okay, nomination by Councilman Constant. To Second. nominate Councilman Bay Doon for the Council Chair Pro Tem. Uh, for those in the audience, just to clarify, uh, because Councilman Muscat decided, uh, because of health reason, that he had to resign, we now need a new council chair pro tem just to finish out his term. So this will be just through December 31st, and at that point they would pick a new council chair and new council chair pro tem. Um, so Councilman Baydoon, uh, Councilman Baydoon, do you accept the nomination? Uh, I accept, Council Chair. Thank you to our Honorable Councilman Constant. Okay. The nomination has been accepted. Is there any other nominations? Council Chair. Councilwoman? I'd like to nominate Hassan Ahmad. Okay. Councilman Hassan Ahmad, unfortunately, he's, he's not, not here. here to accept. <laughs> uh, this is an odd one, but okay, we'll, we'll roll with that for right now. This will be in, in between whether he accepts it or not. All right. Any other nominations? Any others? All right. Hearing none. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and uh, there's no other nominations, correct? Okay, let's go ahead and close the nomination. Anybody can make the motion, please? Move that we close the nominations for Council Chair Pro Tem. Okay, motion, made by, motion, motion made by Councilman Constant, seconded by? I'll second. Councilwoman Breyer. All right, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you please take roll call? Correct. Microphone's on now. Um, Dave Abdallah. Councilman Baydoun. Hassan Ahmad is absent. No Baydoun. Myself. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know Just I got to vote for myself, to be honest. I mean, you're, okay. Um, Nancy Breyer. Hassan Ahmad. Robert Kenston. Councilman Mo Baydoun. And Tom Wenzel. Mo Baydoun. Moby Doon is our new council chair. Project. Thank you, guys. Okay, congratulations. Okay, next up is our Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Mr. Hassan Saab. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Liberty Thank you. <clears throat> Next up, we have our agenda approval. Council Chair. Councilman. Uh, I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the agenda of the regular meeting of September 12, 2023, with correction to item 9D, clarifying that the changes order number two as submitted. Support. Second. Okay, motion made by Councilman Baydoon and seconded by Councilman Constant. Is there any discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes, uh, item 4A. Council Chair. Councilman. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the minutes of the special meeting of August 22nd, 2023 as submitted. Second. Okay, motion made by Councilman Baydoun, oh. seconded by Councilman Constant. Any discussion on that? Uh, I heard somebody. Somebody say something or no? Nope. Okay, go ahead. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? 
The ayes have it, motion carried. Next item on the agenda is item 4B, minutes from the regular meeting of August 22nd. Council Chair. Councilman. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the minutes of the regular mm -hmm. meeting of August 22nd, 2023. Second. A motion made by Councilman Bedouin and seconded by Councilman Constant and discussion. Hearing none, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? The aye. ayes have it. Motion carried. And the last one on our agenda, well, not on our agenda as far as minutes, uh, item 4C. Council Chair. Councilman. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the minutes of the special meeting of August 29th, 2023, as submitted. Second. Second. Okay, motion made by Councilman Bedouin, seconded by Councilwoman Breyer. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Motion carried. I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is... Council public. Chair? Yes, Councilman. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Councilman Wenzel asked for uh, a moment to make a statement, and I will allow him to do that. Go ahead, Councilman. Thank you, Council Chair. Uh, the month of September, we recognize two tragic events that uh, take place, that have taken place in our country's history. Uh, yesterday was the 22nd anniversary of 9-11. Um, this makes me angry and s sad at the same time. We lost thousands of civilians, along with hundreds and hundreds of first responders. And to this day, several hundreds of our survivors, both citizens and first responders, are suffering the after effects of 9-11. And also, we acknowledge for the month of September, which is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, another terrible event that happens more than we'd like. And that, too, leaves survivors in, in bad ways. So I'd like to take a moment of silence and prayer to honor all those who gave their lives and all the survivors and their families of these events. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you very much, Reporting Councilman. Reporting in progress. Did it just okay. start? Hope not, but. Yeah. Well, we're not repeating it all either. Okay. Unless you guys vote to have me repeat everything all over again. <laughs> yeah? No? Okay. Huh? Yeah. Okay, good. Good, good, good. All right, next item on the agenda, I know some residents have called in regards to this, so I want to make it clear, this is public hearings and comment on agenda items only. So if you have a comment on anything on the agenda, you will have two minutes. Please state your name, city, and street. You'll have two minutes to be able to speak your uh, word. Are you speaking, just to clear up, are you speaking as a resident or as, as, a, as an employee? As um, an employee. Okay, if you could just give me a quick minute. Um, this is not set it. up, unfortunately. Can you do it on your cell phone? It. I got it. So Mo is not playing with his cell phone. He's, he's keeping track of the minutes, two minutes. For you, it's a little different, so go ahead. Sure. Um, uh, again, I'm, um, my name is Ali Deeb. I'm the city engineer. Mm -hmm. I, I, um, I have an item on the agenda, 9D, that i like to amend. Um, this is not a change order. This is a contract extension. Um, and um, uh, it, until December of 2024, uh, pending... Um, Corp Council um, issuance of an addendum. So it's really not a change order. It's more like a contract extension. Under the same terms. Under the I same terms of the agreement, there will be an addendum issued to extend the contract date and, and value. So that's in the contract extension. And I it was 9D? 9D. 9D. That 9D, yes. Okay. That's the only Thank you, Mr. Deep. You're welcome, sir. Appreciate it. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak on an agenda item? Please come on up to the podium. Council Chair, where yes. are we? Um, our agenda shouldn't have been amended to uh, reflect the addition of the 9K and 9J. Uh, those were already added, wasn't it? They were already They're added. on there? Okay, they said, they said amended? Yeah. Okay, I didn't hear that part. Okay, thank you. Okay, just give us a quick sec, Rachel. Mm -hmm. You want to set up your phone? How long are we going here? Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, go I mean, ahead. You can always give me more if you want. <laughs> no, I don't need it. Um, Rachel LaPointe, Merrick Street, Dearborn Heights. Um, so I had a couple um, questions about 9C, I believe it is, the school 
uh, crossing. crossing one. Yes. Um, so there was a little discrepancy um, when I was reading through it that the the letter, the cover letter, said that it was for the design work, but reading through the packet, it seems that it's only for phase one and specifically says it does not include the design work. So it seems like this is just the first part of it, and I just wanted to see if, when it comes up, if Mr. Deep could give some clarification on that. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it was about a month or so ago, maybe even just the last meeting, maybe it was two meetings ago, um, Mr. Deep mentioned that we're hoping to get a grant um, next month from the Federal Safe Streets Program for $400,000 for um, developing a plan for safe streets. If we do receive that grant in October, can we put can we put this cost in, like in that grant since it would be essentially the same work, we'd be doing the same kind of thing for that safe streets grant. So this seems like it would be something that would be covered by that grant dollars. So I would hope that we'd be able to apply it to that. But the last one, the last question is that Last August, you guys approved us joining the um, Transportation Improvement Association. Um, this was something that Chief Hart brought. That it's a like a subscription, it's like a membership that we have for them to do studies on streets and safety and cars and all that. It specifically says that we can use it for school studies and pedestrian and bicycle studies. So we paid $22,000 last year to join this, and it seems like they do all the same things that are in this proposal from Wade Trim that we're already paying them to have them kind of on retainer. So I was just hoping to find out if maybe there's something in that proposal from Wade Trim that wasn't included in the TIA membership, and if that's why we're going with Wade Trim or what the deal is with that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Rachel, when that item comes up on 9C, I'll have Mr. Dip come up and just give us an abbreviation on those questions. Those were some good questions, so thank you. Anybody else in the audience that would like to speak on an agenda item only? Coming up, sir. Please state your name, city, and the street you live on. Uh, greetings. My name is uh, Fuad Dalal. That's F-O-U-A-D, three vowels, I know. I'm a resident of Dearborn Heights. I've been uh, on Sheehan Street for 25 years. And during that time, I have been uh, actively communicating with the mayor, city council, and Department of Public Works via email uh, with regard to somebody to come over and drive down Sheehan Street and judge for themselves how horrible and not unsafe the street is. And in front of you, there are some pictures that I, uh, yeah, that I took from that street, so please review them. Um, with the growing number of families and children on our neighborhood, the problem has escalated. You know, vehicles uh, swerving to avoid potholes pose a serious danger to the kids who often play on the sidewalks. At one point, I've seen a, a Ford Taurus uh, hit a pothole and then bounces off and, and hit a fire hydrant. And also on another occasion, I saw a 13-year-old boy driving his bicycle at dusk, maybe at night, bouncing off a pothole and landing on a car. Uh, I invited, I thank you very much, uh, some of the, one of the city council members did come and drive down on uh, uh, Sheehan Street and he said, yes, this is, this is a bad street, we need to do something about it. So, the, so he acknowledged, however, it was not, I was told later by email that it was not in the, in the city current budget. And then the city, and then the, the year after that, somebody came and they, and they marked the potholes and the deteriorations in the street with like orange, uh, it were orange paint, paint. So we were hopeful that they're going to come and do something about it, but nothing happened. And my wife sarcastically told me they just want you to shut up and stop sending them email. Uh, so what's concerning is that houses on Sheehan Street are now staying on the market for an extended period of time likely because the, the roads are, are very bad and people don't want to drive down the street. So please consider repairing and resurfacing the street for the safety of our kids and to make the streets less hazardous and for us to pay less uh, cost for vehicle repairs and our, our house's values are decreasing in value. <clears throat> thank you I got a much. question for him real quick, Council Chair. Uh, thank you so much, uh, sir, for coming here. You said she had now where about it? Is it West of John Daly? Is it West John Daly and Inkster for his house? Okay, so yes. it's more like near Rosemary Plainfield. It's between Charlesworth and Inkster. Okay. Okay, yeah. 
Uh, I agree. Thank you. Just a quick comment, sir. Um, as you know, I value, you know, uh, resident participation, and in, in, in you've been participating for quite a while. As I mentioned, I, I pulled up your old emails before tonight, and we had quite a few emails from you. Uh, so an answer to your wife, no, absolutely it was not to get you to <laughs> not come. Um, I, I, I tell you, a lot of your activism for your street, I mean, obviously, it's still got to be voted on tonight, but the residents on your street have you to thank because that was one of the reasons why that street was considered. Um, and, of course, Mr. Dib and his team did the assessment, the formal logistical assessment. But nevertheless, a lot of your emails to the mayor uh, and the council is what helped put you in a possible position to be considered. So thank you. activism by residents does not go off and think, oh, forget it. No, it was very important, and I, I think... Hopefully it pays off for you tonight. Thank you Thank very you. much. Come on up. Hassan Saab, John Daly, Dearborn Heights. A question about 9D for Mr. Deeb. Um, is there oversight on the contractor for the worth for the slabs that he is changing now, pictures or something? And second, are they working on the weekends or no? Wait, yeah, answer up there. I'm sorry. And is, <laughs> And is there somebody watching their work on the weekends? All right, that's it. Thank you. So um, in terms of schedule, they do, they do work Fridays and Saturdays. Our staff, um, the inspector, um, uh, does watch them. So they do work um, uh, weekends, not Sundays but, uh, or holidays, but they do work um, um, not like the city, four days a week. They do work six days a week, and, and we do have an inspector. And their work is both tested and uh, inspected, so, yeah. Okay, thank you, Mr. Deep. Yep. Seems like 99% of the questions in the city come from Mr. Deep, so <laughs> we're going to call you King Deep now. Come on up, sir. <laughs> Mr. Shoker. Oh, uh, my, my, my name is Sam Shoker. I'm a resident of Dearborn Heights. I've been in Dearborn Heights for over 20 years. What street, please? Uh, on Simon Street. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm here with my neighbors, uh, Stan Colos, um, my next door neighbor, I'm with uh, Mr. Yasser uh, Shami and uh, Mo also with me. And the concern of the street that we, and we complained multiple times, uh, it's really got to a point where lots of times the city came in, did patching and it didn't work because it seems like it's repetitive work that they keep coming and try to patch the street to make it in a good shape. Lots of debris coming from the street, hitting the driveway, hitting the cars, making scratches. It's really also unsafe for, uh, for us, even when we put the garbage out when it's winter. Uh, the, the, the potholes that are there, they kind of like, you get like a black ice frozen, you don't notice it. So it's been really unsafe also for us. We are good citizens. We love Dearborn Heights. We want to make it a good city for, uh, for us. And we're looking for the city, really we're asking, we asked last year, they came in, they did half of the street. Right. And again, uh, I know some of you came and looked at the street, I really appreciate that, but it's really not just me, it's me and like uh, the neighbors on the street, we've been really complaining about the condition of the street to a point that it's really not safe and we look for the city to really consider <clears throat> and really fix the street for once and all. So thank you okay. so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I, I do want to make a quick comment for those residents in the audience um, or on Zoom. Uh, you know, I, I had a conversation with Mr. Dib and, and uh, Director Dib, and obviously what he told me is something that I've known for a while. You know, needless to say, the city, the mayor, et cetera, et cetera, uh, would love to change every single street throughout the city. Uh, but our full budget, and I'm quoting Mr. Dib, our full budget would not be enough to replace all the streets. So needless to say, our city, like a lot of other cities, have to pick and choose. They can't do every single street. So uh, mm -hmm. Director Dib was uh, smart enough to bring in a company that did a full assessment of every, as far as I know, every single street in the city. Every single street in the city, and they ranked it based on the need. And these are the ones that were proposed by this particular company and Director Dib. So for those that see their streets not looking as perfect as a lot of us would like them to be, the reality is the city has to pick and choose every year because the budget for the streets is $2 million. So if we're going to change every single street, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that's much more than $2 million. Just these streets here is going to take up most of the budget. So that's why the city, unfortunately, has to pick and choose sometimes. And sometimes we have to be a little more patient. So thank you. 
You know the e- you know the how this works. I didn't tell you. <laughs> Good evening, Zuhair Abdulha. Dear Bonites, uh, I have some, in street some, only. Please. Street only, please. Rosemary. Okay. I like to always say it sounds good. Uh, there are several items I want to talk about, but uh, I'm going to go for uh, fast. For terrorist capital advisors, they have submitted close to, I think, uh, 54,000 dollars to the police department. I would appreciate it if uh, Director Paul van der Plo will explain what they have done for the police department when this item comes up uh, for discussion. The second thing, 9A. 9A, the mayor is asking, or Mariana Hernandez is asking, basically, even the mayor, is, his name is on it, uh, basically to brought BLN company, which uh, seems to me is the lucky company who got awarded $1.3 million to tell us how to report uh, the ARPA money to the government uh, out of $14 million. And again, we bring in a man to tell us how to spend the $4 million to $7 million, which uh, Councilman Ray Muscat and uh, Councilman Tom Winsel asked to put aside so we can give uh, some compensation to all the employees who work during COVID. The mayor is asking you to give him a blank check. He doesn't come back to you. If you approve this, you're going to be given all the control which you have in your hand to him. He can write, he can pay, he can do, does anything he wants with the money. So I want you to be very careful before you give your authority to anybody. Third thing, 99D. Engineer Deep, just uh, as a friendly advice, next time please be clear with what you put on the agenda because to me as outsider, I look at it, this is change order, million dollars for million dollars. The last thing, the oh, invoice. I'm going to give you 15 thank you, seconds. 15 seconds. The invoice, 1331, one, three, one, I want the head of the legal department to sign it, not Mariana. If a lawyer was hired, he should be hired through Mr. Roger, not the true Mariana. And please be careful because I don't want to see quid pro quo in this city. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else on an agenda item? Anyone else? Okay. I'm sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. So on Zoom, we have... Uh, She's just putting her thumb up. Lisa Hicks. Okay, thumbs up. Okay. Anybody on Zoom that's looking? Uh, unless that is her hand. If to comment. Her. Lisa okay. Hicks is. She has oh, her hand up. up. Okay. So we have our treasurer, Lisa Hicks. Clayton, she has a question. Hello. Um, good evening, everybody. Honorable evening. council body. Um, I just, I put my thumb up because I agree with what uh, Mr. Zuhair Abdelhaq said, stated, and you as a council body, um, I had mentioned this at the last meeting, that if you look at section 8.9, the very last sentence talks about department head signing on invoices, which is something that as treasurer, um, any checks that I sign, I'm, I look at that because we have to adhere and be compliant with the charter. So with that respect, those legal invoices, in my opinion, should be signed by uh, Mr. Farina as he is that department head, so to speak, of the legal department. So I just want to uh, reinforce that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Treasurer. Anybody else on Zoom? Okay, I see none. Nobody else in the audience? Okay, thank you very much. Next up is item number six, fund transfers and current Council claims. Chair. Councilman? I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the current claims ACH wire transfer six through one through six through 59 as submitted. Second. Okay, motion made by Councilman B. Dune and seconded by Councilman Constant. Any discussion on that? Council Chair. Councilman? Um, once again, I have an issue with the uh, the shank bill. It's, I, I, it's not labeled, but I believe it's 652. And uh, I want to thank our uh, comptroller for giving us this 
handy dandy little summarization of our claims. It's very it comes in really handy. Um, there's several things on here that that are that, that are what just item is this? 652. It's 652. This is an invoice that's dated um, uh, May 1st of 2023. But there's items on there that are dated after that invoice date. On the back page, you see uh, there's an invoice for June 1st of 2023 and July 5th. But the invoice is dated for May 1st of 2023. I don't know why these are added on when the invoice was dated several months before that. Um, there's also an outstanding amount on there outstanding balance of 7,000 with no backup. We don't know what that is. Uh, once again, it's, it's really unclear what, the, what this is all about. And then these, these fees that they're charging here, they're charging $300 an hour. And there's several things on here that we need to talk about. Maybe we have a station. But I was reminded, and to the best of my recollection, city council approves <coughs> fees paid out to uh, uh, lawyers that do work for us. And the most we've ever approved was like uh, $275 for our labor attorney. And that was a one-time deal for him only. And we've only, city council has to approve these numbers. And we've never approved anything over $160 an hour. And this invoice is for $300 an hour for every hour. So this, this again, it's it's brought up again because last meeting we didn't have any backup at all. Now this backup's coming with all these questions. I, I, I think we should, you know, table this one, take it off, have, get some more. These are all charges to the Warren Valley Golf Course in one way or another. Uh, there's liquor licenses. Shank uh, represented the golf course or the Issa Brothers in negotiations with the city. And so he was negotiating against the city or with the city. Now he's representing the city. And it's like a conflict of interest. He's, play, he's working on both sides. He's you know, dealing with the city and he's dealing against the city. And some of these things I think our own corporation council should have taken up. Um, some of these, it, it just throws up. It, there might be explanations for this, but it's all red flag stone. This whole thing is just solid red flags on this, uh, on this claim. And I think we should table it and set it aside and and get more explanation. You know, I mean, especially if we got outstanding balance seven thousand. I mean, what's that? What's that for? We got you know the dates don't the dates don't match up. If you look on your last page, council man, council of uh, people. There's item thirteen eighty eight that's dated six one twenty twenty three, and then item fifteen fourteen dash a. That's dated July, and this invoice is from May 1st. That just doesn't make sense. So, Council Chair, I'm asking that this be removed from the uh, from the packet. Well, good, Councilman. Okay, so uh, just a couple items I want to address with this. Um, first of all, I, I'm this this is the one that we had asked the last time for the administration to provide us with backup. So, right. to be fair. We didn't pay it last time, and then we asked for backup to be, to be provided, and that's what's been provided. So on that end, they did what we had asked them to do. Um, I'm going to give you my personal two cents worth on this. Do I think it's, it, and, and I'm not an attorney, so this is just my personal feelings on this. Do I think it's a complete conflict of interest or illegal or not allowed for Mr. Shank to represent the mayor in the recall? Um, and then also represent the ESA brothers uh, while they're working with the city. You know, I don't want to say against the city, but he's, he's representing another entity uh, kind of sort of versus the city. Is it illegal? In my personal opinion, I don't think it's illegal, but does it pass the smell conflict test? It, it could be a conflict of interest. In me personally, if I was in that position or being in that position, I would personally ask, uh, either the ESA brothers not to use Shank, which I know we can't enforce that on them, or maybe we don't use Shank, uh, uh, the Shank uh, organization anymore. Because, again, it just, it, it may not be illegal, and you could better tell me, Roger, but it, it just, it doesn't smell right. 
Well, I, I think to start off with, um, what you guys, sh what the council presented the last time to me, were two forms where the backup was okay, actually. Okay, please, nothing from the audience. The back was actually forwarded, um, contrary to what was represented by the council, prior to the meeting. You and I talked about another incident about um, a productivity at the courts. That's right. what I thought. But the backup was actually presented prior to that. Then what we got last time were two uh, letters, invoices, spliced together. That's why when we asked the question, who's Anna? Remember? And right. who's uh, Marie? I had no clue what you were talking about because they, they mixed them up when they put it to the city council. And I talk, sorry, to the clerk's office. And I talked to the clerk's office. Where did this come from? And they said, that's how we got it. So we had to go back and do an investigation with the controller's office. So in response to Mr. Wenzel, um, uh, you know, dutiful questions, I think that how everything has been presented, if you have a question with the bill's particular bill, it helps when you send it to me before council meeting so I can address it with the parties. I wasn't doing the signing at that time. I did review it afterwards, after the city council meeting, and I started signing them and reviewing them. Um, I have to go back to see if there's anything else on the documentation presented that raises an issue. I didn't see anything that was of controversy. I appreciate him uh, highlighting it. I will follow up. But um, to, to just to reiterate, what was presented at the last council was not accurate documentation. It was spliced documentation, was confusing documentation, and was not accurate. I don't know why, because Mr. Sa um, Mr. Hussein Saad had sent in his backup. Somehow it didn't get sent to you. I don't know. I don't have control over that. But I reviewed it, and then I reviewed after that, the meeting with the Schenck. It's Schenck and Bruch, I think. That's the firm. Correct. Yes. And it was cut off and could not tell what was actually being sent. Now, if you have issues with the dates or the work done, just let me know. Send me an email. I will follow up and, um, and clarify for you. I have no problem doing that. But well, the question that, that, that's being raised is on some of these, all the invoices are from April and some in March, and then suddenly, randomly, you have uh, another one due on 6-1-2023 and another one on, on July the 5th of $1,020 and $570. Um, still balance due, but doesn't say anything about per hour, doesn't say what was pertaining to, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what the councilman is asking. Um, I could give you these if you'd like. Yeah, when you say you, you don't mean me because I did not present that bill. No, 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 no. So, I, but he's, when they present he's, the he's bill. He's asking because you're the corporation counsel. So anything exactly. with attorneys is going to be under you, not necessarily. I, I have you no approve. problem reviewing. I do know what I did review. Some of the bills were late in getting paid, and they may have put together. I have to double check on it. Uh, it helps. and helps us go forward together. If you just send me an email, what you have questions about, I will promptly answer it and get back, as I do. When you ask me any questions, I meet with you, and I'll go and check. Yes, it. you have. So just let me know, and I will follow up with Mr. Okay. Wenzel. I take his, his uh, question seriously. I would ask if we could uh, approve it subject to clarification um, to his satisfaction or council satisfaction, but the specifics that, you, that he's itemizing and asking. Okay, we could do that, but the only thing with that, when you make it subject to the, the council body approving it, that's kind of an arbitrary term, and, and to me, it would still be, just to make it clear, the, the, the firm not being paid, because if this council body has to vote on it, then we got to come back to if reconvene. If you vote with a subject to approval and documentation being presented to satisfaction. I know, but even if it's satisfaction, we'd have to vote on it during a council body meeting. Uh, let me, uh, Councilman Constant had a question first, and you'll be next. But before we go to Councilman Constant, what's your opinion, Roger, and just to put it out here publicly, in my opinion, again, if it was a similar situation based on my little legal knowledge, again, is it illegal? I don't think it's illegal, but it just, it just doesn't feel right. Sure. Do, do, do you not agree with me that it's not the best of choices to have the same attorney representing both entities? I haven't looked into that per se about what the, you said the mayor has used them. I, I have not been involved in that part of it, so I can't speak to that. But yeah, of course, you know I don't I don't just take it that we have to you know quote 
not do something illegal. We have to work together to make sure that we're above that. So I, I, agree, I agree with you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilman Constant? Well, uh, more of a statement. I uh, appreciate the uh, Corporation Council's comments um, w and whether or not there was a conflict, there is a conflict of interest. That's a question, um, uh, ethical question pursuant to the Code of Professional Conduct and um, the attorneys themselves uh, may want to comment on why it is or isn't. Regarding the hourly rate, Prior to uh, a department, a law department in Dearborn Heights, we had, um, we bid it out for legal services and uh, Gary Miatke did the majority of the legal services. He was always um, the lowest bidder, but he always complained and he was correct that it was an artificially low rate, uh, that, you know, $125 an hour or so. Having said that, at $300 an hour for the work, depending on the number of years JA has been practicing, that the hourly rates now are $200 to $250 an hour, not $300. Thank you. Okay. Council Chair. Council? I, look, I think I, I agree with you on this, uh, Roger. Um, this is, you know, it's, I'm sure, I don't, I don't know the, the legality of things. I'm not a lawyer by any means, but it just smells different. When Matt Shank is the mayor's attorney, Matt Shank gives the, gave the opinion letter on X78. Matt Shank represented the Issa brothers on, um, on the golf course, and now Matt Shank is representing the city back on the golf course. And I think my question to you the last meeting was, and, and really it's, an, it's a genuine question, like, sure. is this a conflict of interest? And I, will, and, and I, I, I mean this to, as the body right here like, we're, we're putting ourselves in a position right now where we're about to vote on something that, I mean, he potentially could be representing both sides or his firm. Well, um, I, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I have not looked into if they represent the mayor or what the condition is. But I will look into that. I didn't. I, I, had, I had my direction okay. was to look into Nothing the bill. Audience. Come on. Still here. <laughs> but, okay, okay. Come on, man. Hey. Well, I, I didn't say anyone was stupid. Did I say that? You are insulting all okay, wait, 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 wait. Right. Order, Roger, one second. Point of order, please. I don't want nobody from the audience, God forbid, thrown out, but no. Okay, please, no comments from the audience. Okay. The city attorney is being sympathetic to this question okay. answering it very professionally. Thank you. Uh, Mo, I, I, do, I have listened to you. I didn't look into that. I looked into it to make sure they had the, um, the backup for the bill. Um, and I had not looked at that beforehand. I only looked at the one with uh, Hussein. But I will look at it to make sure there's a conflict. I have to address them. I will send them a letter and have, ask them to look into it and give us an opinion on it. I, I'm going to give you my personal non-attorney opinion. I'd rather err on the side sure. of being Cautious. better than, yes. than err on the side yeah. of saying, okay, it's legal, but, uh, you know, I, I'd, I'd rather just go in the other direction. It's just less headache. So to me... I don't know if we could tell Mr. Issa, no, you can't use this attorney no more. But I think ourselves, we can possibly find a different attorney. I thought they had another <laughs> attorney, personally, but I will double check with it and see. And okay. I agree with you. I err, err on the side of more caution. Exactly. Okay, so with that being the case, was there any other council members that had a comment? Okay. Council Chair, so, go ahead, I, council I just want to reiterate, you know, the fact that there's, aside from the fact that this may be a conflict of interest, and uh, it sure seems... I don't know if it is, but I mean that's that's a minor part because you know the still the city council agreed to pay attorney fees not to exceed any work that the attorney does for the city of Durban Heights, and it was approved by city council of six hundred uh, one hundred and sixty dollars, and not more than that. One one time we did for our labor attorney we offered more, but we only approved to pay attorneys to do work for a city. One hundred sixty dollars. I'm I was I'm going to be looking up looking that up. And I'm sure if anybody knows that's that's what we approved. That's what we bid out. Yeah, that's what. And, so and this I will is look back at Mr. Miyaki's. I will look back at Mr. Yaki's bills yeah. and Mr. Roberts' bills and how they charged, if they, how they discounted, and I will do an analysis and see because I know I had a lot of stuff from Mr. Miyaki had questions about, but I will make sure that how we are on track. And following what what you say and what the council is directing me to do. And okay. also, also the uh, 
hate to keep carry this on, but you know, on the last page, the the outstanding balance. It's just it, it itemizes everything up until five thousand four hundred twenty-seven dollars. All, all these these, and uh, then there's an a, additional outstanding balance of seven thousand seventeen dollars for for what? I mean, there's no doesn't there's no backup at all on that. There's, and well, I'm, I have to double check to see if the, yeah. the the backup has been sent. It just not has not been forwarded to you, and like the, the last time. A lot of these fees are done are are due to uh, legal things going on with the liquor license at the golf course, and you know, Councilman, I want you to know that that is on the council. That is on the city to get the liquor license. Yeah, because it, it belongs. The liquor license is the city's issue. Well, it's got to be in both. It's got to be in the tenant's name and the city's Correct. name. Correct. It the city doesn't have to do but that. The, yes. the, you got to remember, this is still all belongs. You have to keep in mind, the golf course still is the city of Dearborn Heights. Oh, yeah, I know. Operated by the Issa Brothers. Well, I'm, that's what I'm saying. So, like, I mean, we, we are still, it just, the issue right, is Right, we here had to take Onita off, which we did this week. We had to do legal work to get a lot of the things moving on this with the state and the Liquor License Commission, which we have been actively working and diligently moving forward on. Well, both okay, I, I just want to clarify, if you don't mind, Councilman. Um, the number of 7017 comprises of the 5427, which was the breakdown of the total hourly uh, fees. In addition to that, 1,020, which does not clarify what that is specifically for. It just says invoice number 1388 and invoice number 1514-A, which obviously clearly that tells us nothing. But those two amounts added to the fifty-four twenty-seven equal to seven thousand seventeen. Okay. So I just want to clarify. All right, okay. yeah, so but, it's not a seven thousand dollar okay. balance. All right. All right. So it's not a seven thousand. It's a total seven thousand dollar, seven thousand seventeen dollar balance. But that includes what's the hourly wages in addition to those two. I don't know what they're for, but two additional figures. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I see that. Okay. Do you have any other questions, or that's well, it? Well, I think we should. Okay. Uh, so what's your motion? Up. Refer back to the. So the motion was made by Councilman Bidun and seconded by Councilman Constant. We've had discussion over that. Is there any change in the motion by Councilman Bidun? Council Chair, I will refer this back to the administration. What line item? So when you say refer back, you're talking about this specific line item? Correct. By the way, also, I want to make it clear, Roger, I do want to see this get paid. I think moving forward, I think we need to have a clear, clean slate. Uh, but again... We also want to just make sure that we're in the clear, the city's protected, and that we're doing the right, proper fiduciary duties for the city. All right, so just to be clear, Councilman, you're saying uh, claim number 52 is to be taken back to administration. Yes. Let's clarify what specifically for. Uh, I mean, for legality reasons, making sure so that we are get, So the you say to get a legal opinion yeah. from our corporation council, if this is the, uh, legal. Our legal the okay. hourly rate, too, also. What the proper hourly rate? Proper hourly rate, and then I would also 49. like to have a clarification as far as what the 1,020 and what the 570 were for. Number 49. It's 49, guys. It's number 52. That's Wade Trim. No, Schenken and Bruch. Yeah, it is. 52. I don't have that on there. Okay. Thanks. It's 52. Okay, so at this Is that point, on the amended? It's the amended. Okay. okay. Amended. So are you uh, seconding that, uh, Councilman Constant? I am. Okay, so seconded by Councilman Constant. So uh, the motion was amended by Councilman Beydoun and seconded by Councilman Constant to take claim number 52 back to administration with the three items, just to clarify, the three items to be cleared up. One, if this is a conflict of interest slash legal, illegal. Two, what What's the it? two claims are for the thousand and something in the uh, 570. thousand twenty and five seventy and three to verify the amount being paid per hour at three hundred dollars uh, has that been approved by council and when is there anything else councilman that's it okay the, um, the like who, the J A or you know the experience of the attorney how long they've been admitted that information okay so motion made by motion made and amended by councilman Bidun, seconded by councilman constant all in favor please say aye. aye aye any opposed the ayes have it motion carried council aye, chair you know i'm maybe i don't know is this for conflict of interest to have in in-house people looking at a conflict of interest isn't that like 
You know, well, we're going to take the, he's our, he's this be attorney he's general large. issue or I, I something? Saw, so I will no. answer that. Council <clears throat> chair. Obviously, it's a, one of the rest of yeah, no problem. Obviously, as a council person, you're welcome if you'd like to look that, into that, whether you call somebody in the state or what have you. That's one. Two, when our corporation council, which, you know, I consider them a very reputable uh, corporation council, and I've enjoyed working with Roger, uh, when he gives us an opinion, it's not offensive. I hope it's not offensive. No, no. He may give an opinion of X or Y or Z. If we're comfortable with the opinion, we move forward. Mm -hmm. If we're not comfortable with the opinion, then we ramp it up to the next level. And at that point, it'd be with due respect, we're going to go to the attorney general with this just to get a second opinion. Well, yeah, or maybe another attorney. Okay, that matter. Sure. And the, what I said was, so just so it's clear, that the attorneys can say, well, they did represent Mr. Issa, but on this and not on that, and so on and so forth. But uh, our corporation counsel, that's what he's hired for, be the judge of what uh, is acceptable and what's not. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So motion has been carried. Next item on the agenda is a report from the mayor. Mayor. Uh, first item is 8A Community and Cultural Relations Commission appointments. Council Chair. Councilwoman, go ahead. I'd like to make a motion that the Dearborn Heights City Council concur with the mayoral reappointments of Leslie Winless and Latanya Gator to the Community Cultural Relations Commission with each term expiring August 2026 as outlined in 8A. Second. Okay, motion made by Councilwoman Breyer and seconded by Councilman Constant. Any discussion on that? I'll make a little Council, just point uh, saying I've served with uh, both of them, and I can tell you these two are rock stars. So we are blessed to have them in our community and our city, and they do a great, great, great job. I, I really enjoyed working with them on, on, on a commission for, I think, two years or something. So uh, both uh, they've got my full support, that's for sure. Council Chair. Councilman? Yeah, thank you. Um, I know these two young ladies, they've uh, been on the commission since its conception, and uh, they've only moved it forward constantly. And uh, our hat goes off for your hard work and dedication for this commission and for all your work you do for the community. Thank you so much. Thank thank you, Chair. Councilman? Councilman? I wasn't here while they read this because I, I would have loved to have read this because these are two <laughs> of my favorite young gals. Um, I will tell you this uh, great story. I, uh, I've known Latanya and Leslie together. I actually started with them. I'm still on there with them just as an ex officio. I didn't even choose that. They just kicked me to the curb, but it's okay. And, uh, you know, I, I talk to Leslie all the time. And one day I texted her and I said, how you doing? And she said, after five years of being Who a good you? friend of the... No, no, I'm sorry, Latanya. And she said, oh, yeah. she, said <laughs> <laughs> she said, who's this, bro? <laughs> and... Uh, and I was standing in front of her as I was texting her. <laughs> and then I walked up to her and I said, who's this? <laughs> great young gals, great story. I wanted to share that. I swear to God, I love you guys. I promise you I love you guys. Um, they do great work. I know that there are a few things that they're you know, really wanting uh, to do, and they want to see some changes, and they want to find some funding. Uh, you know, the, these, you know, the entire commission goes above and beyond. Mr. Fidget. I don't want to say your last name because I'm... I'm probably going to butcher yeah, we have it. Multiple but, commission members. Um, I know. Mrs. McDonald, Mr. Fragito, I didn't want to say it wrong. Our very own Honorable Najah Janoon. Um, you know, look, this is a great, great, great. I'm actually still on there. I'm excited to still be on there. I know I'm not as active as I wanted to be in the beginning, but they told me I'm no longer a voting member, so <laughs> I just sit there. Uh, but really, congratulations to the two of you guys. It really would not be where it's at today. And, and, you know, salute to everybody that's on there. But Leslie and Latanya, you guys are absolutely amazing. And I appreciate you guys for all that you do for the Urban Heights. God bless yes. you guys. And I make a motion that Latanya answers uh, Councilman Moby Dunes uh, text messages, please. <laughs> All right. So a motion made by Councilwoman Breyer, seconded by Councilman Constant. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is item 9A, Chief of Staff Hernandez, BLN ARPA Task Order. Council Chair. Councilman. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the American Rescue Plan Act premium pay allocation and designation for impacted city employees task order between the City of Dearborn Heights and BLN Emergency Management, LLC. 
In addition, authorize the mayor and the city clerk to sign these documents on behalf of the city. Further, provide the mayor also authorizes any such payment as a necessary expense. The city council authorizes warrants to be issued from ARPA Professional Services GL account number 101 200 822 000 for payment of these services. By doing so, the City Council is authorizing any such warrant and payment without prior authorization by the City Council of the specific warrant and payment as permitted by and consistent with City Charter Section 8.9 as outlined in 9A. Okay, motion made by Councilman Constant and seconded by? I'll second it. Okay, Councilwoman Breyer. Um, Chief of Staff Hernandez, if you don't mind. So just a, a, a couple of comments that I'm going to make. Um, I know one of the residents uh, was concerned in regards to the uh, fees. Uh, most specifically, uh, he was referencing capping it, uh, which is involved in a lot of contracts. Um, I do want to say that in the information and the attachment that uh, our Chief of Staff provided to us, it does say on there not to exceed $50,000. Although in my humble non-legal opinion, uh, Roger can probably give a much better legal opinion than I can, but I would like to have that as a part of the motion not to exceed $50,000 because although it's in a, the attachment, I don't know if that necessarily makes it a full motion because the motion does not include the $50,000 cap. Um, read the motion and how you're proposing it, and then we can listen to it. And see it so. Well, he read it already, but I'd just like to add that on it. But sure. Ms. Hernandez, just a little... That's okay. If you'd like to maybe... Um, Reply back to the resident's uh, concern. As amended. Uh, yeah, you can absolutely amend it. The backup does state that it is not to exceed $50,000. Um, I don't know if you want me to elaborate a little bit more on the item. No, no, just if you don't mind, I know the resident that just left had some concerns in regards to that. So if you'd like to address some of those questions, you're more than welcome to. Okay. Um, so just as a reminder for everybody, again, ARPA um, is funding that we received from the state. And... Um, we have received $24,314,463, out of which there are five categories that we can utilize the funds for. One of them is revenue replacement, which um, we already passed a motion for $10 million to come back to the city's general fund as part of the revenue replacement. That leaves us with about $14 million left um, that can be used for the other five categories. Premium pay is one of those categories. And th there has been a lot of discussions about us providing that um, premium pay to our employees who work during COVID. Again, there are a lot of federal regulations associated with how it can be paid. So that is what BLN is gonna help us do. They're gonna help us do the calculations and read what those federal guidelines are to make sure we're not going outside of the scope of the grant. And that's pretty much it. Okay, council members. Uh, Before we go ahead and you have questions for Marianne, I got a question. When it says here, by doing so, the city council is authorizing yeah. any such and any such warrants and payments without prior authorization by city council on specific warrants and payments as permitted by consent of the city charter 8.9 as outlined in 9A. Can we actually remove that? I'm actually not a fan of that. I feel like it eliminates the check and balance, and I think it also prevents from council being aware of what is being spent and what isn't. Uh, then, uh, you know, I think it also leaves the open bubble where I've, I mean, we, let's just call it for what it is. We, we're seeing the talks. Somebody that's working in this department is saying, oh, this is being spent running to city council. I think really eliminates all the black clouds, allows us to be transparent, and at least city council still involved. That, that's basically what's going to make my decision on voting either yes or no on this. Again, the council has authority to choose whatever they choose to do. Um, again, this is a not to exceed $50,000. So it's just like I any know. other contract. It simply speeds up the process and lowers the amount of paperwork that is filed through to the council members. But if you're not comfortable with that 50000 and you want to see each invoice as they come through for yes. however months it lasts, that's your prerogative. So just to clarify, Councilman, it, this, has been, this has been put on as a part of all the different motions. If it is I, not I mean, on there, if we approve to buy this, let's say, uh, then once they actually purchase it, they got to come back with the bill again. So even though we've agreed to pay $20 for this, they got to bring it back to the council no body for approval. But this is also ARPA funds, which will also could potentially be given back if we misspend this. I know that this is going through some emergency management. It's going to be, but like at the end of the day, we need to have some type of oversight mm -hmm. as, as this body. This ARPA money is different than, you know, we're using as tax levies that we're collecting and spending 
where we don't not exceed fourteen hundred dollars. Because at the end of the day, there's not to exceed fifty, but twenty five thousand can be spent without the approval of us. Okay. So you're right. If maybe you can buy this for twenty, but what if a new? Which I'm not saying anybody would ever. I'm not even insinuating. Please, I don't want this to be twisted. But hypothetically, someone takes twenty thousand and buys a car. We don't know that. Okay. Also, chair. Yes, Mayor. With ARPA, everybody knows every penny you spend with ARPA, the federal government, they look at every penny, not dollar, every penny you spend. So That's great. you can't buy a car with it. So I, I never, I never insinuated no, that I know, you but would every, do it. Every, no, I'm just letting you know, for every dollar you spend, not, you know, for it, it's down to the penny. When you go in, you have, you have to report it periodically to the government, see how much money we spend from the ARPA money. So it does have to be... Uh, there's more stringent requirements on the ARPA money than anything. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, I don't so think it would we do need have to report it to the then. government. So my yeah. personal suggestion yeah. is maybe. Exactly. Okay. It's a big deal is there. So my personal suggestion, you know, the ARPA money when we receive it, the last thing you want to do is create any type of roadblocks for us possibly receiving it. My personal suggestion is let's do it up to ten thousand dollars or maybe fifteen thousand dollars. So this is where we're not slowing down the process. When money's coming in from the federal government, you take it. You, I don't want to slow down. Personally, I don't want to slow down the process and, and, and God forbid, put us in a position where we don't get it. Number two, I want to keep uh, the, some of the council members in mind um, that there's not too many meetings coming up between now and the end of the year. And the last thing you want is because of a two, three, whatever it is, maybe sometimes four-week gap, we don't end up approving it, and therefore, God forbid, something happens where we don't get the money. Personally, I'd like to still give the, the administration some leeway with that money. Of course, there's checks and balances throughout the administration. Um, I'd be comfortable, I don't know if you're comfortable with it, Mariana, but maybe a $10,000 or $15,000 amount every what? time. Would that be workable? Yeah, whatever makes you comfortable. Council Chair? Councilman. Thank you. Well, I'm more confused now after your statement there. <laughs> um, well, yeah, the this, same, this, this is what so we're, I, yeah. to clarify. Yeah. At the end of the attachment A, uh, our chief of staff had on there not she she put the specifics. Right. Okay, and yeah. then she put not to exceed fifty thousand dollars. Right. What I said earlier to our corporation counsel uh, Roger is, it's a part of the attachment, but it's not a part of the motion. So if it's not a part of the motion. Yeah. That's just paperwork. Well, because so I said let's add it to the motion, the actual mm -hmm. cap, the cap amount. I what I'm suggesting now, based on Councilman yeah. Bidoon, let's make the cap maybe 15000 or 10000 I, I understand that part, but your, your statement that we might not get this money, no, uh, I, I'm my, just, my, 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 my understanding is we already have all this money. Correct. We already got it one time, and that was right. it. But um, so, the, you know, when you said that we, we, we might not get the money, I, I that's what you're saying. I go, wait a minute. I see what you're saying, yeah. But, you know, in our packet, we, we got this right here. And nothing on the back. And then on our desk, when we got here, we got this. But it's to be all fair, broken down. To so be I fair, it was email this. And, you know, I'm trying to look at it now. And I don't even know what this means. It says not to exceed $550,000. And it says labor rate table. And I don't know what this means. Office manager, $315 an hour. I mean, what, what rate, labor rate for who? I mean, is this the city employees? No, no, this Which is for BLN. Uh, BLN. So this I'm is sorry. the company's. That they're charging us, their office manager and their BLN emergency their off, management their office policy. interns get seventy dollars an hour. I mean, we have uh, hardworking DPW. Council don't chair. make half that. <laughs> uh, this, this this table is like these these are like lawyer fees. Council Project chair. manager, Council chair. I mean, in, engineer, intern, two hundred twenty five dollars for a senior environmental analyst. I don't even know what this is. I mean, we just got this. And I, you know, I'm, I was against hiring this company from the beginning, and I'm voting no on this because it's. I just don't. It's spending money, someone telling us how to spend our our ARPA money, it just doesn't make sense to me. It's a very, you know, it's very valuable. So I, I want mean, you to keep in mind, Councilman, that there's certain money that this money can. You can Google that. You can Google that information. No, you can. Uh, it's a little more complex than that. But let's. Yeah. let's I, like I the look. Mayor. I, I'm, I, there's a lot of things that I agree with you oh, on. Yeah. I can't agree with you on Googling okay. this. Councilman, the city. Uh, Mr. Mayor, go ahead. You guys already approved BLN, correct? And the tables were in the original contract that you guys approved many, correct. many months ago. So are we just being? I didn't. Uh, I, didn't I voted no. Okay, whatever you guys do. A anyway, we, we put this in front of you guys to approve or disapprove it. So it's up to you guys. Okay. Um, Chief, if you had something you want to say. What the mayor said, actually. Okay. 
Um, I do want to clarify two things, uh, just to be fair. This was emailed over to us by the clerk's office after the initial packet. So these attachments, she just, uh, the clerk's office put them on our desks here just as a backup, but she had emailed them uh, either Friday or Monday, if I'm not mistaken. Monday? Or Monday, yeah. So we did receive them on Monday via email, okay. which was additional backup that was provided by the chief of staff. Okay. Any other comments on this? Okay, let's go ahead and take this to a vote. Council Chair, so are we amending this? Uh, we're going to amend, okay. So Can yeah. someone what is, uh, propose it again? Look, I feel, if you're I, amending I, I, it, I'd feel, you pick a dollar. I'd, I'd feel comfortable with $10,000. Not exceed ten thousand dollars. And I want, I want your motion including capping it at ten thousand. Oh, I didn't, I didn't start the motion. I didn't read this motion. Okay, so Councilman Constant. Yeah, was it ten thousand or fifty thousand? I just fifty thousand is what she, the chief of staff put on the backup. If it's on the backup, that doesn't make it binding. It's just on the backup. So I said, if you need, if it is fifty thousand, it's got to be a part of the motion. But I suggested let's not keep it at fifty thousand. Let's keep it at either ten or fifteen. It was just a arbitrary number that I picked. It's a little more manageable. Well, is the um, chief of staff comfortable with uh, ten thousand, or is that too low? Yeah, I don't believe one of their invoices would exceed ten thousand dollars. And then you can right. come back to us with another one if when it comes in. Exactly. And I think that keeps everybody uh, keeps Have. everything. You know, it's a compromise. Okay, so we'll make look, we've already uh, approved uh, them. Uh, uh, Might as well just add amendment not to exceed ten thousand. Okay, so the motion has been amended by Councilman Constant, amended not to exceed ten thousand dollars. Also, we're yes. not going to yes. keep. We're not going to leave the point where it says authorizing the city council with specific warrants and payments because we you are now going to have to come anything exceeds ten thousand dollars. But if okay, it's then, above a thousand five hundred and ten thousand, yeah, then I would have to five come back. six thousand. No, they don't Correct. have to come back in front of the council. Correct. Only if it's over ten thousand. Right. So you're going to eliminate that last line. No, here. that last one is the same one that's on all the motions. The only thing that's changing right now we're capping it at ten thousand dollars. So if there's a bill that comes in at fifteen hundred dollars. The mayor and the uh, controller is authorized to pay that. If there's a bill of $28,000, then that's not approved, and therefore they cannot pay it. So you're happy with it just saying 10000 Yeah, Correct. because the last Without one Without the that, approval okay. of council. Yeah, the last one, that the last sentence that Councilman Bidoun is bringing up is on all the motions, so it should be fine. That's the standard language. Standard language. I know. Council okay. Chair? Councilman? Just so we're clear, this is a one-time deal. They can't submit or pay out 9000 Again and again and again. It's just up to we're ca so when you cap it, everything. We're capping it at ten thousand dollars. So oh, if there's a bill, the tent's gonna have to let's use back hypotheticals. Back. If there's a bill that comes in at fifteen thousand, chief of staff and the administration would have to come in front of us. If there's a bill at nine thousand, they pay it and they're done. Okay. So they, they but if there's a new bill, then they have to come in front of us again, go through the same process. So they can pay as many bills as they want for nine thousand. No, they, can, they can't do. They no. can't do. They can't do seven six thousand dollar bills. No, they can't. If they spent nine, they have a thousand left to spend. Totally total. To cap on this. Cap thousand. Maximize that ten thousand. Okay. Anything above that, they have to come in front of the city so they council can't body. Do 9, 000, 9, 000, yeah, no, yeah, it's yeah. not like the credit card. Okay. So the motion has been made and amended by Councilman Constance, seconded by Councilman Breyer. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. You, no, you're seconding the amendment. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. Madam Clerk, please. This is, this is Dave Abdallah? Yes. Mo Bidun? Yes. Nancy Breyer? Yes. Robert Hansen? Yes. And Tom Watson? No. Motion carried. Okay, motion carries. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is item 9B with City Engineer 2023 Street Construction Program. Uh, Council Chair. Councilman. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council authorize Roy Trim to complete the design work and bid documents and provide field service and testing related to the 2023 Street Construction Program for the replacement of the five streets. In addition, authorize the Mayor and Comptroller or clerk to sign the necessary warrants and the treasurer mm -hmm. to issue payment not to exceed $98,000 from the local street GLA account 203-203-895.000 as outlined in 9B. Second. Okay, motion made by Councilman Bedouin and seconded by Councilman Constant. It, it, we're going to have discussions on that, but before we do, I'm going to have uh, our director, um, me and yourself had a conversation. I gave kind of a little bit of a briefing on that. And as you are aware, Director, um, amongst other things that people are concerned and complain about throughout the United States, for that matter, not just our city, 
but amongst them throughout the United States is streets. Now, me and you had a conversation. It was a good conversation, and I gave a briefing on that. We want to at least just give your perspective, maybe for a minute or two, to the residents. So let me let me start by saying, well, thank you, uh, Council Chair. Um, just a overview, like big overview, right. what what goes on when we select a, a replacement? There are five major categories, and and every major city when you treat pavement. Um, so within every city, like ours, we have federal, state, county roads. You know, Telegraph, Michigan Avenue, Ford Road don't belong to us. We have major city streets. We have local city streets. We have um, a full replacement category, and we have sectioning. So that's five different categories when you start looking at pavement replacement. Okay, so, and then within those categories, so when we do an evaluation, and you have you happen to have uh, in front of you tonight um, two of those categories, um, item for sectioning, you know, which is the angel uh, contract, and we have full replacement um, uh, contract. So we have five streets for full replacement. So when we do an evaluation, so in addition to what you said earlier about PACER program, we put we, we did a full evaluation of the city and rating. So we know what streets are yellow, red, green. So we, we have that, and we have we quantify them. Um, so then we start looking at budgets and where you use it best. So we have streets that are currently red, but the pavement is failing. The pavement can be replaced. However, we have major underground utility infrastructure work. So it makes no sense to replace pavement and then come back and start looking at so what we had on Beach Daily, South um, Beach Daily. Um, I give you one. Um, I think um, Beach um, Daily. Um, Kenlock, Kenlock. Well, yeah, but but Kenlock right by uh, uh, the Berman Center. Uh, we we was gonna I was gonna put that on the full replacement category because it, it needs it north of Hass. Um, however, um, there was some major uh, underground. Um, um, work that needed to be done. So it makes no sense to spend money on replacing pavement and then come back and look at it. So we need a full assessment. Rip it out. Yeah. You have to rip it out and figure out there used to be a church in that one corner and uh, some weird stuff. We did videotape the infrastructure. So we need to come back maybe with a full design of replacing the infrastructure and then put new pavement on top. So we just don't want to waste money on, on you know. So now um, with these five categories, we have different funding. So the city puts money every year in our budget for local and major, and we have Act 51 money. So we put all that money together, but each category has its own different criteria. Act 51 for major is for major roads only. You have local uh, uh, roads. So we, we have all these budgets. And then what we do, this is the money that funds all this work. So the sectioning that you have before you tonight, I believe, is a million-dollar uh, contract extension, 9D, is, is part of that money. And then you have five street replacements that are on the street now for bid. That's part of that money. And those are local. So this is what comes out of our budget each year. And so we're adding those to those categories. So these are the five categories that we look at every year. And we try to wisely use our budget to where it's needed most. So uh, ultimately, we will get to a point where our streets are to a level where we say, you know, now we just need to maintain but we're not to that level yet. We're catching up on a lot of the pavement work that was um, neglected, not neglected, not <clears throat> kept up with. But this is no different than all major cities have that issue. In fact, the entire country has in infrastructure right. <laughs> issues now. So we're trying to play catch up, but we're trying to do it in such a way that is wise, not very um, uh, expensive to our taxpayers. Um, we are seeking um, uh, funding from every possible you know, grant uh, uh, opportunity. So we, we are now on the federal aid list for the first time ever. So now we're getting, we're getting some money for, you know, federal money to the city. So all of this is designed to keep those five categories in line without adding to our budget each year and coming back Mr. and saying, now I need $10 million. So sorry to cut you off. For the residents <clears throat> that are here waiting, Mr. Chokir and his uh, co can, can we give them a timeline when we're expecting to start this project? Well, it's got to pass first. Which one? So wait, hold Which off. One? The, the five so streets that need to be repaired. So provided so it passes. So it has assuming to pass that it yeah. passes. So, so assuming that you pass it tonight, this is for the uh, five streets that you have before you, Crestwood, and you, you have that list. These yeah. are red, and they're ready for um, this. The, the bids are out on the street now. They're due on the 21st, so they're out to bid. See. 
Hopefully, um, uh, I've, I've got a lot of calls. Are we going to work on them this year? We done yeah, this we're going to start. No, not done. Start. We're going to start. So the way it was bid, we have we have five streets. Look, we asked for uh, do one, two, three. This is there's a lot of work out there. Contractors are not they're they're just swimming in money. So ARPA four, made it very difficult. So, so we can start. approve. So we're going to approve for five. Three could be done, and the other two might just take two years. I might. No, 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 no. So if they start, they may have to come back in, in March and finish them. That's that's basically. We haven't scheduled. We haven't talked schedule. The bids are not even back yet. But I'm getting a lot of calls from contractors. We offered to have one large company do one, two, three, four, or five based on cost. So we gave them an option to bid separate or bid them all together. If I get good numbers, I will be coming back to you for approval. If the good numbers state that I can have company A do one street, two streets, or three, and then I use more, more contractors to finish earlier, I can do that. Okay. Let's, but let's I'll bring those on. options in. There, It's out on the street for bid now. Okay. So I, I tell you for myself, I've personally driven by these streets, um, and as you know, uh, myself and yourself yep. have had many conversations in regards to these streets, um, including I know the mayor has been in on a lot of these conversations, yep. and I tell you, they're badly in need Needed. of not repair, yep. replace. So I, I'm, I'm glad this is moving forward, and, and I hope we can get this thing to pass, Mayor. Okay, so, I mean, I, I wish uh, Mr. Deep just mentioned, you know, trying to catch up or like every city, but actually we're in a worse situation yeah. because we're going back and repaving streets that was paved before. They were paved in the past. Yeah. So we've just bumped into some, a street that they, this is a street that the city paid for. Three inches of concrete. And your, your sidewalk, your sidewalk is minimum, it's four inches. Four inches, yeah. This is a street where there's vehicles and trucks going over with three inches of concrete. It should be minimum six to seven inches. Seven. And this is the stuff that we're finding. And again, you know, this is stuff that we're, we're finding out. We're trying to fix these things. So it's not just like, I wish we were just doing streets that were done properly in the past. We're, going to, we're finding streets that they were improperly done with less than half the concrete on these streets. Wow. So it's pretty pathetic, you know, that this stuff was done to the city of Dearborn Heights. You know, it went in front of council. They approved it in the past, and we don't know the date on it. We're trying to, I asked today, I want to see contracts, see who did that work on that street. Wow. Thanks for the good fight. Council Any Chair. Councilman. Uh, Mr. Deeb, this is, uh, this year's 2023, this, this budget year, mm -hmm. this, these are the streets. Yes, sir. Um, as uh, many of our council members up here know, we have several residents that read the packets online to get them out on Thursday or whatever. And I, I was bombarded by, not bombarded, but, you know, a couple dozen maybe calls and communications from people from the south end that said they noticed not one of these streets is on the south end for this year. And I know we've done some work in the past. Right. But, I mean, couldn't we just throw a bone in there and... Get an so, intersection or something. <laughs> all right. Again, sir, I, I, I have um, a PASER map that shows where all the stuff, So, but the sectioning is heavy on the south than it is on the north. We're doing sectioning on the south. So, and again, what I failed to say earlier is that this, well, the difference between sectioning and full replacement is if you look at Sheehan, you get to a point where more than 60% of the pavement needs sections, then it's cheaper to fully replace it because you can do it, you know, the machine. Well, not to mention aesthetically it looks nicer. And then, and, and economically too. So if you're going to jump pieces, you get to a point where I've reviewed those streets, and, and especially on, on uh, Sheehan, you got to a point where you can do sectioning, but you know the, the, it was more than 60 to 70 percent bad. So it became cheaper to actually do full replacement versus small pieces all over. So that's the category. So far on the south end, we have a list starting next week. We're doing major work on the south end. But so we, if we can maybe count on some sectioning being done oh, on the south end? Some, it's, some they were supposed areas. to be down there today. Yeah, well, there's a lot of bad areas. That yes, are there are. The red or whatever the They're marked color up is. and they're on the list. Yeah. They're on okay. the list. All yes, right, sir. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Director. Yep. So let's go ahead and take this to a vote unless anybody has an important comment. Hearing none. This is a motion made by Councilman Bedoun and seconded by Councilman Constant. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. D, for all your hard work. Sure. For those in the city that don't know, I, I hate to put them on the spot here. 
the residents have no idea how much work this gentleman does. You, I, I have an idea because I'm talking with them on a regular basis. A lot of the great things that you're seeing from the city, as you know, obviously, thank you for the administration for bringing Mr. Deep into our administration. But this gentleman does, as I always joke with him, everything but windows. He's going to fix our Zoom meeting earlier, but he, I, somebody, no. Mr. Cooper jumped ahead of him. So he's the he's the expert. Yeah. So thank you, thank Mr. You, Deep. Sir. Thank you. Okay. Next item on our agenda. I guess you might as well stay up there. Uh, speaking of him doing everything. Uh, City Engineer Deep, design work authorization for citywide school pedestrian uh, crossing improvement program. Council Chair. Councilman. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council authorize weight trim to complete the design work and construction documents needed to facilitate the citywide school pedestrian crossing improvement project. In addition, authorize the mayor, comptroller, or clerk to sign the necessary warrant and the treasurer to issue payment not to exceed $65,000 as outlined in 9C. Second. Second. Council okay. Chair. Okay, motion made by Councilman Beidou and seconded by Councilwoman Breyer and discussion on Council it. Chair. Councilman. I'd like to change the amount. I think 65000 is uh, a little under budgeted there. Uh, I think our schools are very, very important. But I also, um, I know that we also, and, and I know this is just a little bit off. I know about nine months ago, it was, I believe, you and the police chief came forward and said TIA was going to be doing its studies. What would just hang on? Yeah. And we're going to see signages and, and we're going to do things. And now we're having weight trim to come out. And Two they're going to things. Two different things. I took note of what was brought up earlier so um, it is coordinated between the two so they do studies but this is actual design work for a construction document before I go out to bid I need to produce construction set things that contractors bid on so this is what this is for we will coordinate with TIA absolutely for, for do we have an update on TIA yet have we seen anything it's been eight months I I no, promise you it's been over, I, well over eight months. I used them a couple times, and I know the police does. Uh, things like the traffic studies for um, 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 the um, um, uh, Starbucks situation. They were able to produce the records and do the, the quick no, studies. No, have we for, heard back on this? On, on the, I know they said, remember, when you guys say here, yeah. what was said to us was that they're going to study all the schools yeah. and that they're going to see where they need the proper, proper signages and what, what yeah. they can and can't do. I haven't seen it personally, but this is just uh, the design work for design construction document for construction document to produce the, this. So this is different. Okay, so Council. the question I have, Mr. Deeb, so let's presume for right now we approve. Look, this is big on my personal agenda, as, as you are aware. Um, some members of the audience have been coming forever, and there's one main one. There's, there's our chairwoman for that. have been coming for a while um, looking into this. And I, for one, was blown away that, unfortunately, our city, and I'm not blaming this particular administration. I'm not blaming any administration. But unfortunately, this has gone on for too long. Like, like for example, some there's some things that I presume would be in every single school were not there. And honestly, I was dumbfounded that it's not. So needless to say, this needs to move forward ASAP. The question I have for you is, provided it passes today, mm -hmm. provided it, and I'm saying provided because obviously we've got to vote on it. Right. When will boots on the ground be there? When will a student walk across and see lines in and signs up? And, and somebody in the audience like, a couple of weeks ago mentioned uh, the word school across right on the street before, you know, when you're driving. Every school should uh, have that. Every school should have that, absolutely. So personally, I'm going to be pushing for that too. But when will the boots, when will we see end result? Okay, so this is design work. I get right? it. So the, if you look at the scope, the actual scope, there's going to be survey, right. uh, uh, counting, um, a usage, um, um, you know, actual design work before you put the pavement, you know, start pay, uh, uh, drawing pavement uh, painting. That's the easy part. It's the actual try to figure out what you're building. That's what this is for. This is design work and survey, field survey and counting. To, so we know where to put those devices. Mr. It, it is not painting. This is not, the, you know, DPW does the painting and they're doing a great Mr. job. Council Chair. I'm so sorry. I just want to say one thing. When it comes to design work, we want signs, put them to the ground, and cross, crosswalks that are, are visible. Like, it should not Did be more the, that you see that. The, but TIA said that they were going to tell us exactly where to put them. Mm -hmm. So, 
So what, what I would say in regards to this, I'm going to give you a metaphor, and I don't mean that in a, in a violent way. No, but the, the problem sometimes, not the problem, the challenge, the concern, call it whatever you want to call it, with engineers and architects and designers is they aim, 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 aim. They keep aiming for nine years before they actually shoot. I'd rather shoot and then aim, fix it up later, because this thing is just taking longer and longer and longer, and I'm not blaming you to make it clear. Are they, yeah, by no means, you're, uh, Mr. Dave, your your boots are on the ground. We know your boots are yeah. on the ground. I can't go. Well, we, to have to, we have to I, we have to share some listen, of our frustration with I you. I have to have a document to be able to bid. At this point, I don't have a document to put it. I, I get bid. all that, but I, what I'm saying I, I, I've is, I've already talked to a contractor. Know, but, they can do it. But what I'm saying the is, document. the longer we take, okay, the, the 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 higher chance that a student may get hurt. And again, this was not around. It's not not around because you, you know you didn't do something. You just came into our city a couple of years ago, but unfortunately, because of the past mistakes, and who knows who's to blame, but we got to do this ASAP. Council okay, chair. Council Chair. I, I'm going to say chair. something to this body and the people that have been coming here. With respect, it's been well over a year that people have been questioning and saying they want these things. Like, let's stop throwing things under the rug. Let's just get it done. That's all we're asking for. Yeah. Guys, no need. Thank you. You have a proposal before you to do the design work to get it done. Yeah. Um, it's up to you. You can vote it yes or no. I mean, that, it, that's, that's. I know, but either way, do. we need a. We need this to be a top, top, top priority. But this is the council first chair, right. Councilman right. Tom Wenzel. Thank you. I got a couple of things, maybe three of them, but um, this, this, uh, if we approve this, this will be the design, the blueprints that mm -hmm. someone could bid on. And there's yes. not going to be any further work needed to bid on this job. And this, this is like building a house. That's all the blueprints for the house. Exactly. That's what it is. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. Um, now, can we get, you know, say if you're building a house and you, you're really anxious and uh, in the plans there's a little tool shed. Can we get this tool shed built really fast? Okay. So, so I'm a licensed engineer, right? So meaning that I don't like to build something that turned out to be against code and then I get sued in the future, right? So if I wanted to put something in the ground, I like to make sure that it's actually code compliant. Mm -hmm. I can defend it in court. I mean, if something does, it's protecting the, the public. It's doing what it's supposed to do. If I go out there and start doing, I can hire a contractor and give them a bucket of paint and tell them to go paint. That is not the right way to do it. You need to make sure that it's compliant, it's useful, it's code compliant, mm -hmm. and it's safe. Well, so I can yeah. defend it. If I end up in court, um, uh, Jeffrey Figer is asking me why you did it, I'd be able to defend well, that's, it. Well, I understand that. That's what I'm saying. And once we get, you know, when, when we get something that's a, an easy project, mm -hmm. like I say, like the tool shed or something, okay? Yeah. That's, or or the, just putting uh, some signs in the ground, the, e the easiest one to do, whatever it is. Do you know can we get that one going? Well, with, what, I, I just, you know, whatever just it is. Saying. You know, and... Well, Maybe get something going right away where okay. we can see some progress being made and, and instead of, you know, going okay. all along and, you know, you see a foundation of a house coming and build, it takes so long. But if we can just see something done, whatever it is, and you know what the easiest thing is okay. that, that can be done before cold weather maybe or something, that's coming up close. But another issue is, and tragically, Joey Smith lost his life at night. And... We need to someone to come in and do a survey of these areas at night. Okay. You know, to do like whatever reflective paint on the on the ground or stop okay. signs with you know extra reflective stuff on them, okay. because you know this you know. I can. I don't want to use Joey as 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 the no. catalyst for all this, but it, it has what been because there's there's been several other instances. But you know that was yeah. a nighttime yeah. issue, and that's that's one thing we have to look at is you know street okay. lighting. You know, okay. going around at nighttime and checking out the street. I've, I've had people talking to you, you know, you come out of buildings and schools at night, and it's like, wow, where's oh, my car? I can barely see it over there, you know, things I just of that added nature. It. Okay. It's All, added. Right. All right, thank you. Yep. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this to a vote. Uh, just one quick last question, Director. Uh, one of the residents brought up the issue of the $400,000 uh, money that may be coming in. If we already spend this money on this, in this case, let's look at 65000 and the money eventually comes in. 
can the city be reimbursed or can that go back into our general fund, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah. Um, so, so uh, to my knowledge, I need, uh, I'm going to verify that particular grant, but some grants uh, uh, only cover construction. This is design. Okay. So, so I will, I will be, but I will double check on just, that. Just yeah. make sure you look at I will. Okay, thank so, you. I, will. I just, I just, before we, we make the vote on this, I want you to know. You're all against we, it. All we want is safety for our children and kids at school. Just, all we want. So, and I know you want the same. And you're, you look, guys, chair, keep it in mind, for those watching at home, Mr. Deeb's boots are on the ground. He really just, is. Just yeah. just so you'll know, these photos that you have before you, I actually drove the city, we were there, the, the different city, and took those photos and talked to the contractor. So the contractor you see in the photo, I stopped and talked to them to try to get them to Dearborn Heights, and that's what they, they recommended. So most of the work has already been done. I'm just asking you for the design work so I can bid it because I have, I know it's going to be more than 1500 So it needs to go out to public bid. I do all my projects that way. So that's, that's, that's okay. the request. Let's go ahead and put this to to, yes. to a vote. Um, and I've already said who made the motion seconded. Well, well, I'm, uh, one, one last question for Mr. Deeb. Do you think sixty-five thousand dollars is enough for the design? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm going to add the night survey that that comes. Then, let, the, uh, let's raise yeah. it. Yeah. Let's raise it from now. That's good. Okay. okay. I mean that, that. Well, let's keep it the same for right now. He needs to, needs to if come I, back. If I need to come back, he's going to look into it. it. So let's find out numbers first. Right. Yeah. Okay. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? The eyes have it, motion carried. And I'd like to commend the residents again that have been active in make sure, to making sure that the wheels keep turning on this and the different school boards, of course. So thank you very much for all of your hard work. Next item hard is item team. 9D. Council Chair. Councilwoman. I'd like to make a motion that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve change order number two to the concrete sectioning street repair program contract with Angel Cement Company for additional asphalt areas that have been identified by the contractor in the amount of one million from the current street repair budget for a new contract value of two million fifty nine thousand nine hundred sixty seven dollars and fifty cents in addition authorize the mayor and controller or clerk to sign the necessary warrants the treasurer to issue payment from the gl account number 202-202-880 do you want to tell her that dot five five zero as outlined in 9d second a motion made by uh, Councilwoman Breyer. That's to expand. Can, can, I, can I add one thing? So, so Council Chair, this is this motion was based on a change order. This is not a change order. We we um, oh, initially yes. we talked. I know this is a contract extension. So you just contract. Have to, we so you just have to amend, amend the contract extension. extension. Yeah, the, the Dearborn City Council asphalt. approved the contract, contract extension. extension. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's sectioning. contract extension uh, until December of 2024, subject to Corp Council uh, issuing an addendum. That's what this is for. All right. Council Chair. So Council. Uh, there's also a, so there's a typo on there. It's um, it should say instead of asphalt areas, yes. it should say concrete. Yes, it's they concrete. They're not, this company doesn't do asphalt. Yes, you're right. Okay. So a correction in the motion. Uh, for additional concrete areas instead of what's what mentioned <laughs> is asphalt. Right. Okay. Uh, any Ms. other, and this was uh, made by Councilman Breyer, who's seconding? <coughs> uh, Councilman Constant. Councilman Constant. And this is with uh, two changes. Number one, it's going to change from change order to contract extension. To and December from, of 2024. Yep. Right. In December of 2024. And then the word concrete is being replaced. I'm asphalt. sorry, the word asphalt is being replaced by the word concrete. Council Chair, uh, Council Chair, I have one other question. What? It's subject to Corporation Council and it's a million dollar extension. Okay. okay. Extension. Corp okay. Um, Council Chair? Yes. Um, I brought this up to uh, Mr. Deaver before the meeting. Um, our, our contractors, I know I was contacted by a tree trimmer that wanted to do some business in the city, and he said he had to be, to be do work in the city. He had to be licensed with the city. And Mr. Deeb informed me that he, he's, he's not aware of any, any rule like that. Because um, all his contractors are licensed with the state of Michigan, but they, they don't have to be licensed with the city of Dearborn Heights. Um, Roger, do we have, do our do certain contractors have to be licensed and some not? Our ordinance specifically for people cutting trees, they have to be licensed yeah. and permit to be able to do that. So As for everything else, I'm not sure. That's I think just it's special, the case. tree trimming? Yeah, because I was just reviewing the ordinance, um, I think, last Friday. 
in terms of some changes. So we were going through what they required to do. Okay, so that's only specific to tree trimming. You have to. That's all I know right now. I'm not. I, I do it by case by case. Okay. Like if you have another, like Mr. Dib, make sure all his are contracted. Yeah. We they're well, he's they're licensed with the state. I know that. Mm -hmm. He looks into that. He does his due diligence there. But mm -hmm. I was just wondering if if that was a typo for the tree guys or that's just specific just for the tree guys. Can you look at? You look that? at. Oh, I'm so sorry. If you, if you look at the ordinance, you'll see how it specifically requires. The homeowners okay. when they get them are used. Right. So, uh, Councilwoman right. Breyer, would you like to make the amendment adding that subject to corporation council approval? Sounds good to me. Okay, so this is all subject to corporation council approval. Uh, motion has been amended by Councilwoman Breyer and seconded by Councilman Constant. All in favor, please Council, say aye. Council aye. Chair, aye. I'm so sorry. I just had a quick question. I know, Mr. Deeman, I just want to ask it on the record. I know that, you know, there's been some back and forth on oversight, four inches, two inches. I don't even know what this stuff means, but you can assure us that there's somebody at all time watching. We have full and records and measuring. I personally went and bought all the tools needed with a string line and a tape measure and steel. And, cut, and they're running yes. those uh, those rods, metal rods. Yes. Okay, because look, at the end of the day, what we and are they still charging us the $6 mm -hmm. a square foot like we approved on them the yeah, first time? Yeah, we are at 55 a square yard. So uh, at this point, uh, and they're the market honoring in the, they're the same. Yes, they're honoring the same prices from I mean, the, the honoring us. We're giving them a lot of business. I like to give them more because that will extend. I'm sort of like, I like to be conscious about spending money because I want to do more. I have more needs than budget. So if I can do it less, that means I can afford to do more work. Great. It's and, not, and, I, and actually, it's, it's not a formal survey, but in a lot of my driving around the city, I've, when I've seen them doing work, I've consistently seen some representative of the city I've seen Rick there. I've seen uh, Mr. Uh, Jamal there. Jamal, yeah. uh, I've seen you a couple times yeah. there. So it's an informal survey, no, but I've is, seen it is, it is different directors. There. Look, all we, what we don't want is in three, four years, they're crumbling up, and then we're like, sure. That's all. You don't have, I, I've run across four inches, as the mayor indicated, and three inches on major roads. And, and I don't know how it passed, but, you know, it, 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 it was done. No, we're not doing this. We're... we're Every pore is monitored. The quality of the material is tested, so we know where it's coming from. We know what the strength is, and compaction of the subgrade is monitored. Mm -hmm. So it's done properly. Mm -hmm. All right, let's put this to a vote. I, I, I've been meaning to ask him. It's just really quick. You know, a lot of times when you do concrete work, uh, it fails because of the, uh, the the reinforcing rod rust starts to rust, and, mm -hmm. and then bust the concrete up. Mm -hmm. See it on bridge overpasses, we see that brown mm -hmm. stuff. Have you ever looked into having a non corrosive uh, reinforcing so, rod so, put in there? It lasts so, a lot longer. So, so the feds are looking, but I'm not doing full mm -hmm. uh, uh, reinforcement. So, the actual mesh that's no longer class A doesn't require it. I'm doing the uh, epoxy coated uh, lane ties, meaning they tie the new concrete mm -hmm. to the old concrete, epoxy mm -hmm. coated, and it's it's actually that's what we use. Now I have run across prior contractors in the city use a non epoxy coated, and that's that's a no no. We don't our reinforcement. We're not building bridges. I'm going to come back to you with bridges later, and and so one of the newer material now is uh, carbon fiber in lieu carbon of fiber, uh, steel. Yeah, yeah. So. Again, the feds, because federal, uh, fed, there is a federal bridge program. The feds run the bridge uh, uh, standards, not the state, not us. Mm -hmm. So um, as soon as they adopt it, but they're looking seriously at it. It came from Lawrence Tuck. Um, so they're looking seriously at, uh, I believe, already ad adopted it. So if we build a, a bridge with federal money, it will have to be mm -hmm. um, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, we should make sure the guys don't nick that epoxy coating on that. No, we're big. So far, all the yeah. stuff we're building, yeah. uh, you can you can check. We have records of all yeah. of them. It is actually epoxy coated. They're the green coat, green painted yes. rods. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Epoxy right. coated. Let's go ahead and put this to a vote. And no more questions. <laughs> all right. Uh, Council Chair. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carried. Next item on our agenda is our popular Mr. Deeb again. Uh, item 9E, City Engineer Deeb. Who's going to read it? Council Chair. Councilman? I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve change order number one to the asphalt paving street repair program contract with S&J Sealer Company 
for additional asphalt areas that have been identified by the contractor in the amount of $107,000 for a new contract value of $297,800. In addition, authorize the mayor and comptroller or clerk to sign the necessary warrants and the treasurer to issue payment from GL account 202-203-880-500 as outlined in 9E. Second. Okay, motion made by Councilman Constant and seconded by Councilwoman Breyer. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carried. Next item on our agenda is RIT Director Cooper, Police Displays and Monitors. Council Chair. Councilman. We move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the purchase and payment of various displays and monitors for use in the police department from CDWG for a cost not to exceed $10,775.96 based on my deal pricing. In addition, authorize the mayor and comptroller or clerk to sign the necessary warrants and the treasurer to issue payment from JAG funds. Furthermore, provided the mayor also authorizes such payment as a necessary expense, the city council authorizes warrants to be issued for the payment of these services. By doing so, the city council is authorizing any such payment and any such warrants and payments prior, without prior authorization by the city council of the specific warrant and payment as permitted by and consistent with city charter section 8.9 as outlined in 9F. Support. Okay, motion made by Councilman Constant, seconded by Councilman Bedoon. Any discussion on that? Council Chair? Councilman? Um, I didn't see the, any other bids on this. I, and um, I know it's, it's, it's referring to the My Deal, which is supposedly the best deal you can get. But in, recently, we've had some amendments made where there was people that had better prices than My Deal. And, I mean, this is we don't have three bids for this. Project just this one quote. The the my deal is the is the price invented by the state mm -hmm. to make sure the companies meet the guidelines and and our um, state appropriated pricing. Yeah, but uh, we recently got something where it was a, me a, a item was amended because there was a contractor that beat the my deal prices. Are you referencing to the SUV? I think it was something. Yeah, from Ford's. Yeah, yeah something. Yeah. So it was, it was recently that we had to make an amendment on it. Um, I mean, why are we going away from our proper procedure about getting three? We, we always get three quotes, even if we get a my deal quote. My deal is not technically a quote. It is yeah. already, the quotes have Bitted already been yeah. submitted to mm -hmm. the state. Mm -hmm. It's usually the, the cheapest price. Usually. Yeah. Go ahead. And, and again, you know, this is something we've been doing for years. We follow the state guidelines, like everything, like everybody else in the state. So if the state, they do their due diligence to find the best deal for a particular commodity or anything. So that way you don't have to do the, a, lot, a lot of the stuff. They already done it for you. They looked at the specs. They looked at everything that, you know, that, that the state would look at. And that's the, the list that they put out, my deal. So... It's a state uh, uh, requirements, and it's all, I mean, it's a state, they, they require certain vendors to follow certain criteria, guidelines, and that's what everybody goes, the whole entire state uses my deal. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to repeat my point. I mean, there was a, deal, a situation that came up recently that which one? Was somebody that beat Councilman, my deal. Councilman, can you tell us which one? Because I don't recall. I, I believe he's referencing the Ford SUV, it was, if I'm it not was, wrong. No, we've never gotten an SUV through. The only one SUV we, we received, we ordered, we never got it through my deal. Does anybody remember doing that recently? I just remember something about the truck, but it's... I, yeah. I remember something. Yeah. There was something we just did. It one, might have been through Mr. It. Cooper, even, I believe, that you came back with something that was a better deal than my deal. When and larger, uh, larger equipments, yes, I, they're they're going to match or beat the my deal pricing for some of the past projects when it was the the network gear, the cameras, yes, those those would beat. Um, but that was again, we're looking at hundreds of thousands of dollars for it. I'm not saying that ten thousand dollars isn't something to look at, but when it comes to this kind of equipment uh, with it, it's very very hard to meet the my deal pricing. 
I, I mean, presume yeah. director is an expert in the field. You've right. looked over those numbers and you're pretty comfortable with the ten thousand dollars. I, I am for for what we're getting there. Yes, I am. Well, you know, I, I'm taking his word for it too. But you know, it should be you know, with all these things we we're going through today, it should be nice to say, hey, well, here's another company. It ain't been you know, it was fifteen thousand. You know, just for peace of mind, you know, because that's our normal procedure is to get three bids on every anything that's over five thousand dollars. Not if you was my deal. Yeah. So, so let me ask you a question, uh, sure. Director. Thank you, by the way. Um, my question is, so is this like the new procedure that we don't go out? Because I know this isn't the first conversation that we've had where we've said regarding equipment, why are we not going for bid on, on these other things? Believe it or not, um, I got a phone call on this. I got a phone call on, 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 this, on this here, and they said, why didn't we go out for bids on this? I promise you this has... I, and this actually just came to me now, and I said, I, I really don't, I don't know. I said, I, I believe we use my, uh, you know, we use this company all the time. And they said, okay, well, I just want you to know, I think it went up on BidNet for one day, or it went out there very soon, and then it was, you know, the setup was set up completely different. Um, this, this, you're talking about? Or maybe there was another thing. Somebody recently called me about something that went up on BidNet regarding technology. Uh, and they said it made it very, very hard for somebody else to kind of bid on this. We, uh, okay. I, Mayor? Yeah, we, the last bids that I, I can recall, they all went on, on uh, actually we got them through my deal. And again, if there's something on my deal, we go through them because the state already does what they need to do for the, for the, st for the That's fine. entire cities. However, if something is not on my deal, then we go through the the other option by going on BidNet and trying to get the other quotes, the two, three, four, whatever quotes we can get. And so, I, I want to make clarification to, to the residents so how my deal works. Basically what the state does is, let's pretend they're buying a bunch, let's, let's say you know each city needs 10 of these. The state will bid on 2,000 of these, and then when cities buy them, they know they're getting a good deal because they made a bid based on 2,000 of them. They got a good deal. They put it on my deal. Instead of being 20 bucks each, it'd be $16 each. And then cities can take advantage of that mass uh, purchase. That's Correct. That's the advantages. Okay. Any other questions on this? Let's go ahead and put it to I'm a cool. vote. I'm going to Okay. Thank you. Talked it to death. All right. Um, what, what are motion made by Councilman Constance, seconded by Councilman Beydoun. All in favor, please. I'm sorry. Yes, correct. Uh, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carried. Thank next, you. Next, thank you. Council Director. Chair, I mean, can, in the future, can we get, you know, go by our standard procedure and get three quotes on stuff? I mean, at least an, another quote. Well, the standard procedure is my deal. Yeah, but yeah, my if deal you say you'd like to have other quotes, I mean, once idea. we get the packet, you can try and suggest it. We've you've let Council us know right Chair. now. Yes. You know, Again, my deal, it's a quick process to go through, and it's, it's vetted by the state. And if you need to go through bidding process, you're going to add another at least a month for it to go in front of you guys. So if we need something, and if it's vetted by the state, you go to the state, my deal. Well, you can't guarantee that it's the best deal. It's not a guarantee. Well, if you can go if bid that can, one and let us know, well, you know. Well, I'm saying business. you can't say it's the best deal every time. That's, what I'm, that's it, my it point I'm trying to deal. say. I mean, just because it's the state, I mean, everybody believes everything the state does, right? You know? Council yeah. Chair. But if keep you can give me an example. State, they got no advantage. Yeah. For yeah. the state, they, they got no advantage. Probably, I'm sure, yeah. If you can give me an example, you know, I'll look into it. Okay. Okay. Next item on our agenda is item 9G, Fire Chief Brogan, purchase mm -hmm. and payment of technical rescue equipment. Council Chair. That's one. I'd like to make a motion that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the purchase and payment of technical rescue equipment from technicalrescue.com in the amount of $2,977. This purchase is from an AFG grant, the federal portion being $2,679.30 and our portion $297.70. This will be paid from AFG grants 101-335-940 dot zero eight zero upon receipt in addition authorize the mayor and comptroller or clerk to sign the necessary warrants and the treasurer to issue payments as outlined in 9g support Second. okay motion made by councilwoman Breyer. seconded by councilman Baydoun. any discussion on that 
Hearing none, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carried. Next item on our agenda is item 9H, uh, Police Chief Hart, disposal of city property. Council, Council Chair. Chair. Councilman Constant. I just want to Constant. Yes, please. Uh, the Dearborn Heights City Council, I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the disposal of the following two police vehicles that have been deemed totaled by the Michigan Municipal Risk Management Authority, MMRMA, Unit 42, a 2014 Chevy Tahoe, VIN number, it's there, uh, uh, unit number 21, a 2022 Ford Explorer, VIN number 1FM, etc. A claim has been submitted for Unit 42, and claim submissions are being finalized for Unit 21. These vehicles will be turned over to the MMRMA for reimbursement purposes. In addition, authorize the treasurer to deposit the reimbursement check into federal forfeiture account number 265 Zero 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 six three six. He's reading the account number, forfeiture account. Yeah. What? Or just say forfeiture account? Forfeiture account number two six five zero zero. It's a GL account. Six. This was what was provided by the director, so wait. Well, but let's hold off for a second. Just say forfeiture account? Don't say the account number. All right. The federal forfeiture account upon receipt is outlined in 9H. Second. Okay. Motion made by Councilman Constant and seconded by Councilwoman Nancy Breyer. Any discussion on that? Council Chair, can, Councilman? can we have uh, the director give us, I mean, is this money... Um, this money we're getting from MMRMA, uh, we're turning the vehicles over to them, and they're writing us a check for ninety-four thousand dollars. Is that what I understand here? Well, that's what we have right now, and then there's another one is under is being finalized, Unit Twenty-One, and then the claims have been submitted for Unit Forty-Two. So whatever they whatever the reimbursement back, it's going to go back. But totals to those two time. numbers total the ninety-four thousand. Uh, okay, director, go ahead. So yes, just like in your personal capacity, if a car gets totaled, there's certain, you know, the car's worth X, the equipment's worth Y. Uh, we get paid for that based on our insurance claim. For right now, car 42, if you'll excuse me, I wanna read the, I have a copy of what you're looking at right now. And car 42 was finalized for $39,204.85. That's what MMRMA paid us for the destruction of that vehicle. And then we are finalizing CAR 21, um, but this just our MMRMA's uh, procedures and how they issue the funds for that. And then that fund goes straight to the city, and then this esteemed body can then determine where that goes. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussions on that? Hearing none, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carried. Next item on our agenda is item 9I, Community and Cultural Relations Commission letter. Council Chair. Councilman. Um, I'm actually, before we read this, can we allow the commission to get up here and read their letter before we, before we you know, <coughs> go and file this? That's okay, okay with uh, Read it into the guys. record. That's fine. Oh, okay, well, thank you. already up there, so we're not going to... Push them back down. All right, I'll be short. Good evening, City Council, yeah. to our mayor and to city administration. My name is Latanya Gator. I'm here um, on Madison Street, Dearborn Heights. I am the acting chairperson of the Dearborn Heights Community and Cultural Relations Commission. I've asked that my fellow members stand with me in support of my letter today. Council Chair, do you need them to state their name? No, it's okay because it's public. Or, okay. Uh, Who's on the commission? Go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, and for the record, I did submit this letter and request to council chair, um, and I'm hoping that he sent it to city council and to city administration. Um, it is basically in some regarding um, how city council and administration can take it a step further to support the work that we do um, to fulfill our duties or to truly fulfill our duties um, in compliance with Dearborn Heights City Ordinance uh, H05 03 Section 2581. 
And the letter reads, and it's dated September 6, 2023, uh, to whom it may concern, since its reinception in 2020, the Dearborn Heights Community and Cultural Relations Commission has proudly served our city by highlighting culture and diversity amongst all demographics, in increasing educational awareness in many areas, and improving community relationships. This body cannot and will not continue this much needed work without either a budget and or the ability to electronically fundraise. On multiple occasions, this body has been told that the administration was working towards a solution that would allow us to fundraise so that we would be able to continue our work within the community. Unfortunately, due to the inability to fundraise, our work has come to a halt. It does not seem as the administration or council has truly worked towards a solution. Therefore, we are asking administration and our city council to reconsider giving the Dearborn Heights Community and Cultural Relations Commission a budget and or the means to fundraise on or before De December 1st, 2023, respectfully, Dearborn Heights Community and Cultural Relations Commission. Uh, to be very transparent, we did hear back from the mayor's office stating that they are working towards uh, allowing commissions to electronically fundraise. But again, because this is our repeated request, we wanted to present this to you all today in hopes that we can make those steps uh, very actionable and forthcoming really soon. Thank you. Thank you, Latanya. I, I, I will say, Latanya, I, I think I'm, at least I can speak for myself, not for the body, but you guys have my full support. I don't see why any commission, uh, like, you know, like the diversity of this Cultural Relations Commission, wouldn't be able to fundraise, to be able to use those money to put it back into our own community. Uh, so I'm, I'm all for it. But... You have to keep in mind where the administration of this council is coming from. And I'm not to say that somebody would misuse funds. We still need to understand that if funds are being misused, the city could then be liable. Because, I, you know, when I had these discussions, uh, this is what they came back with us. But I agree. I think you guys should all be able to fundraise. We should be helping fundraise and maybe even giving back with you guys, uh, especially as an ex-officio. But... Uh, you uh, and uh, Chief of Staff Hernandez are ex officio yes, for the record. Yes, but 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 I but I want you guys to know that for the legality reason, which I know sometimes that it doesn't always sound perfect, the protection of the city and the fiduciary that we have to the city, and and the administration and the mayor has to protecting the city, it's the second this commission allows to do something with with its funds where nothing may not happen or nothing wrong might not happen, but another commission does so. And it starts pointing the finger and saying, well, you guys are letting them do it. And then something bad goes to happen because there's no check and balance or there's no control anymore. And it's kind of putting the city. In. And I'm, again, again, I'm not saying no. But who's, but who's well, asking to be in control of those funds? Not at all. So those funds could be sent to the city. Nobody was asking for us to be in control of those funds. Not whatsoever. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't think there's anything in there that says they can't fundraise right now, is it? There is no electronic funding method, and we've been told since 2020 by the Treasurer and City Administration that that has to be something created and done by you all. Roger, can we, we look we into that? We have started. Um, I've put together the bylaws and articles of incorporation. Obviously, we don't want to do one alone and leave the others out. So we are in process of doing that, but we, we also have to um, get our commissions moving. But I think that the, the plan is to set up a civic association. And I've talked to the lawyers from... Um, some other cities, Inkster, Royal Oak, that have put one together, which allows the cities legally, and I've talked with Plant Moran on it, how we can get it done structurally and organize it properly. Thank you. But we are 100 percent behind it. I know. Uh, I know that some things come up, like last year has some fundraising when I just started for, for some women organizations and stuff. We want to make sure you're on track. We want to get all the other disability, the beautification, other commissions as well moving and have one source to pull it all together. Thank you for that Council update. Chair, Councilman? can you sp tell us specifically what you mean by electronic fundraising? Whether it be like, and again, I know it has to go through Corporation Council and make sure there are no liabilities attached to it, but a PayPal account, um, any type of account where people in the community can submit donations, um, whatever it may be, whether it's monetarily, just not old school way of sending a paper check through the mail to the treasurer's office. That is our only way of collecting donations and sponsorships at this time, and we're not able to extend our reach if that is our only way of fundraising. Right. Thanks for clearing that up. You're welcome. 
You know, I, I got a question, Roger, maybe <clears throat> for you. Like, I think of, like, the universities that have, you know, ABC, you know, uh, association. They open up a, a, a nonprofit EIN. They get an EIN number. I mean, I was a part of the LSA where we opened up a bank account. We put our money in there. We were able to showcase the hard work that we've done. I mean... They're acting, um, they're acting under us as a municipality. With the okay. municipality, it, it triggers different um, 501c3 and different tax guidelines things that we have to comply with. Okay. I was and just thinking I did run it by Plant Moran, and I did put the stuff together so far. So we are progressing on this. So. Thank, Thank you, you Roger. Roger. Okay. Okay. Thank Let's you. go ahead and put this to vote. Oh, uh, it's this one's just received note and file. Yeah. Uh, who's making the motion? Council Chair. What? I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council receive no and file the letter from the Community Culture Relations Commission as outlined in 9I. Second. Motion made by Councilman Bidun, seconded by Councilman Constant. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Well, I'm sorry. Well, they have it down for a vote. I'm sorry. You're going to vote? But just receive. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, just a little quick statement for a lot of members of different commissions, including this particular commission, which I had the honor of, of, of serving with all of them. Um, keep in mind, these are all volunteers that are not getting paid. So uh, all the ladies and the gentlemen that were that was up there do a lot of work for creating, creating, creating good cultural relations and diversity in our community. And this is some great work for free on their own time. And I know multiple projects that were done were done with funds directly from the different commissioners. So kudos to them. And, and thank you and any other commission members that uh, volunteer in these commissions. So thank you. All right. Next up is CEDD Director Jamal Program Year 2023-2024 uh, CDBG Action Plan. Council Chair. Councilwoman? I'd like to make a motion that the Dearborn City Heights, Dearborn Heights City Council receive, note, and file the Dearborn Heights Program Year, uh, PY, yeah, Program Year, 2023-2024, CDBG Funding Allocation Signed Agreement as presented. In addition, authorize a controller to amend the city general ledger, line items for Fund 103, Account 960, Community and Economic Development, Department, according to the allocations table and the U.S. Treasury slash HUD slash DH integrated disbursement and information system, which is the DIS records. Furthermore, authorize the CEDD director to expend the DH slash CDBG funding according to the IDIS record and to approve the ISIS drawdown vouchers to pay back the city general fund and amend the 103 fund general ledgers accounts as needed according to city CEDD slash CDBG, citizen participation plan and HUD applicable rules and regulations. Further, authorize the mayor to approve the federally funding CEDD staff salaries for fiscal year 2023 to 2024. Moreover, authorize the mayor, the controller, or clerk to approve the CDBG expenditures, warrants, payments, and the treasurer to pay them in amounts not to exceed the balances of Fund 103 budgetary line items, according to the City Charter, Chapter 8, Section 8.9, as outlined in 9J. Second. Okay, motion made by Councilwoman Breyer, seconded by Councilman Constant. Any discussion on that? Um, just want to thank the clerk's office. <coughs> uh, Director Jamal got this a little bit later than he was anticipating, and... I thank the clerk's office for adding this on the agenda. And I know there's a lot of extra work that they did, and, so thank you. And for typing it all out for uh, Mr. <laughs> Jamal. Right. Thank okay. You. Um, Council Chair. Councilman. Um, there's parts of this here that, you know, it was read, the motion was read, and there's a lot of things in, in the motion. And one of them is uh, keeping a promise that we made during our budget hearings to increase the pay of the staff at the CDBG department uh, to a, a fair wage. And... Uh, we approved I, I, that already. I, yeah, I believe this will make it, you know, official, and those those people will get the uh, raises that they deserve. And this is does this money doesn't come out of our city budget. It's a, it's a fed, it's federal money that the, this this money is coming from. So um, it's about time we did this and uh, 
Director Jamal did a great job in writing this up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, motion made by Councilwoman Breyer, seconded by Councilman Constant. Any other discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is CEDD, Director Jamal, agreement with weight trim. Council okay. Chair. Councilman? M me or the Councilman? Oh, sorry. Which one? We do. <laughs> right. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the agreement between the city and weight trim for engineering design and the con contract administration for improvements to Heather Lane Park mm. for the cost not to exceed 67500 and Van Holm Park for the cost not to exceed 67500 and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign the agreement on behalf of the city. In addition, authorize the mayor, comptroller, or clerk to send the necessary warrants and the treasurer to issue payments payments according to the city charter, mm -hmm. chapter 8, section 8.9, as outlined in 9K. Second. Okay, motion made by Councilman Bidoun, seconded by Councilman Constant. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carried. Next item on our agenda is new business 13A. Council Chair. Councilman. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council uh, renew the business license of Anthony All Car Truck Sales at 20032 Van Bourne, Rusted Crowd Distillery uh, at 6056 North Telegraph and Weiss Financial Auto Group at 5952 North Telegraph as outlined in 13A. Second. Okay, motion made by Councilman Bidou and seconded by Councilman Constant. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carried. Next item on our agenda is item 13B, temporary food truck tent cart business license application and renewal application. Council Chair. Councilman. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the temporary food truck tent cart business license application for Hot Wheels Grill and the renewal application for shawarma is outlined in 13B. Support. Okay, motion made by Councilman Constance, seconded by Councilman Beydoun. Any discussion on that? Council Chair. Councilman? I don't think we've ever had something that specified uh, the uh, cart tent. Uh, yes, we have. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we have. Yeah. So is, the reason mean? the reason this was added in because at one point um, in our community <clears throat> we have to adjust sometimes for the diversity. So sometimes during Ramadan people would have a cart, look, or a, or a, or a tent, or or an actual table, and that's why this was all added in probably about three four years back, just so that it applies to those also. So this doesn't necessarily mean a truck. It could be a, a in this case tent. it is a truck. And this one is so a truck. when they when they go through the both the building department, um, it is it is an actual truck. Can they set up a tent outside the truck? Uh, it'd be whatever the building department has approved them for. So I, I don't cart, want to state food cart. Is that how we're you know, how, so when they, we're when they apply all three of those categories? So I, I see your point. So when they apply, they make a specification as far as what is the um, utility that they can use to be able to sell their item. Mm. And in that case, it would be, you know, whether it's table, cart, pen, truck, et cetera. The short of okay. Okay. That one is actually a food truck, like I know a, for a fact. Like a fair, they have a tent or something. Yeah, you know. yeah there is some specifications because so if, if you look through these, they have to give an actual drawing where they have, like this is a sample for yeah. those in the audience. I mean, they have to give an actual drawing where everything is at, in this case, cooler, fire. I don't think we have actually truck, one tent or truck in the city. I mean, a one tent or cart in the city thus far. They're all food trucks. Yeah. Look, I'm going to tell you right now, this was one of the best things that we did as a city because now right. it's all managed and not every mode that can here can just open one up and be up and running. It's managed, it's mm -hmm. checked on by ordinance, checked on by the building department, and checked on as far as licenses with our uh, clerk's office. So I, I think it's, it's definitely going in the sure. right direction. Sure. Okay. okay. Thank you. So let's go ahead and put this to a vote. All in favor, <laughs> please state aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carried. Um, next item on our agenda is comments from council members. Council, council chair. chair. Okay, well, let's start with ladies first. Yep, council absolutely. Woman. All right. In an effort to lessen blight in the city, like Mr. Muscat always wanted us to do, it has been recommended that particularly the lawn cutting should be 
taken care of by landlords who own more than two or three properties in the event their tenants do not do so. I'd like to get something going along those lines. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Councilwoman. And this would be for ordinance slash building, et cetera, et cetera, administration. Okay, thank you. Any other council, comments from council members? Council Chair. Councilman, go ahead. I know uh, earlier we... Uh, we gave a moment of silence for 9-11, so my heart goes out to, um, you know, all of our first responders. Um, you know, you know, I still remember 9-11. I was in the sixth grade Meshivax class, and all the kids were just getting picked up by their parents, and I think I was the last child to get up and leave. And I only got up to leave because I called my mom, and I said, she said, no, you're going to be fine. Stay at school. I said, no, Ma, I want to leave. And so I was eventually uh, picked up by my mother. But uh, really, my heart goes out to all our first responders, our firefighters, our police officers, putting their life out on the line every single day. This happened in New York. This happened in our own country. This can happen in Dearborn Heights. This can happen anywhere. And so remember when you're seeing the police are fired out there, uh, they're risking their lives every single day, and especially here in Dearborn Heights. So I salute to you guys, and I thank our uh, men and women uh, in, in, in our police department and across the globe. Uh, secondly, <coughs> my son just turned two years old. He's crazy. He's actually amazing. <laughs> He hasn't stopped running around. His new favorite word is whoa. Everything he sees is just whoa. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And uh, again, I'm just going to go back to just you know emphasizing on, on loving each other and, and really family, spending time with your family. I know the councilman, uh, Tom Wonsel, uh pushes for that a lot. I've been trying to do it a lot. I actually took his advice. No phones for an hour. It was actually driving me crazy. I think I did it like for like 33 minutes. <laughs> I ran back to my phone. I had like 10 missed calls. I kid you not. Uh, but we, we walked around the block with my dog and my son and, and my wife. I chased my son half the time. Then I went to go grab my phone. I realized it was only 33 minutes. I said, yeah, time's crazy for that. But uh, uh, really, spend as much time with your family. Love each other. Shows, you know, go home. Tell your loved ones you love them. If you're upset with anybody, <clears throat> you know, put it beside you guys. It's okay. Uh, just spread love. Thank you. Um, I'd like to take this moment to call out my family. Sunday was Grandparents' Day, and I'm a double grandpa. Not one of, not one, not daughter, not son, not son-in-law called and said, Happy Grandparents' Day. So I'm calling them out now, and I hope this goes in the paper. <laughs> For those grandparents in here, Happy Grandparents' Day. I, I never knew how good it felt to be a grandparent. It, you know, I always hear from my parents um, that grandkids are way better than kids, and I, I never got it. I always thought, what a line of BS. It just never made sense. But I've made it clear to my family that I love my grandkids more than all my kids, mom, <laughs> dad, wife, everybody, brothers, sisters combined. So happy Grandparents' Day. I know it's Sunday, but happy Grandparents' Day for all the grandparents. Yeah, but, but I want you to know, Council Chair, you don't look like a grandparent. You look very <laughs> young. You. I mean, Thank you. it must oh. be the, the shaving of I the got beard. married. I was 12. But let's <laughs> But, but one last thing, Council Chair, that I left out that I had written here, I also want to recognize, uh, and I know this sounds crazy, aside from the Detroit Lions, who had a great season, uh, you know, far. yeah, they had a great season thus far. Uh, but really, Robert Salo is uh, uh, the head coach of the uh, New York Jets, and he's from Dearborn, Michigan. On 9-11, uh, 2001, his brother was actually in the World Trade Center. He escaped, ran out, survived, four hours later called his parents, and inspired Robert Sala to, you know what, chase his dreams because you never know what life leaves you with. And he, 20 years later, he became the head coach on 9-11 and won a Monday night football game. So congratulations to Robert Sala and the uh, New York Jets. If he ever sees this, it was a good game. Yeah. His parents were longtime residents of Dearborn Heights. Yes. Correct. They lived on an outer drive by Ford Road. Yes. Okay. Uh, any? Yes, go ahead, Council. Uh, I'd also like to thank our fire department for hosting another successful Chili cook-off. Uh, I attended it Saturday along with uh, the mayor was there and uh, I think the council chair was there. Um, they raised money for the burn camp and there were some uh, people there from the burn camp including a, a young lady who had suffered some burns. Uh, always a uh, good event. Uh, a lot of families there. So they did a great job. And um, remember our uh, first responders including our firefighters uh, one day after our, the anniversary of September 11th. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, Council Pro Tem? Yep, go ahead. Thank you. Mo is fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I just wanted to, I had written down here to echo the uh, 
success. I talked to a lot of people that attended the chili cook-off, and they said it was a great time as always, especially for a family. It's a fam big family event, like I always want to push. And unfortunately, I was, wasn't able to attend because uh, uh, my wife fell ill, and uh, we actually used part of the uh, fire department with the EMS squad had to come take my wife to the hospital. Sorry and to um, the, the professionalism of these guys in our Dearborn Heights Fire Department, are, I can't say enough about them. I mean, courteous, knowledgeable. I'm, I mean, it, it was... I took a bad experience and made it a little bit more easy. And I can't, I can't thank them enough. I can't thank the chief and everyone involved with the Derwent Heights Police De uh, Fire Department. And um, my hat goes off to them for the training that they've got and uh, everything that they do for the community. It was, it was a bad experience, and it turned out to be a good one, for our, a reasonable one for our, me and my family. And my wife is doing well now, so... Um, uh, thank God for that. Um, as far as, far as the, some family activities, I want to say, mention again that on September 23rd, the Parks and Recreation Department is putting on their family outdoor movie at the uh, Swapka Park right behind the Richard A. Young Center. And uh, that's a great family event. I'm encouraging everyone to go there. There's concession stands. All the concession profits go to the Dearborn Heights District 7 Dads Club. And Mo mentioned something about phones, and I, I, I've been working on phones. And my family, I'm not the most popular guy, I'll tell you, my kids. I don't, I don't like you either. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm, coming up with, I'm, I'm coming up with another idea about the phones coming up uh, next, uh, next meeting. Thank you so much. So I've got one for you that we use at lunch when we go out with uh, you know, a bunch of us at lunch. Because everybody, especially realtors, they don't want to use their phone all the time. So everybody puts their phone backwards. Right? You can't see what's on there. And the phones are obviously ringing. And the first one to pick it up pays the bill. Not one of them picks up the phone. Oh, oh. I, I, I could imagine they all walked out without their phones in their hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Council right. Chair, I, you know, one other thing I want to say is, you know, I want to thank the people that come out for these meetings. Yes. You know, uh, it's tough for us, you know. Come out and show your, you know, your support and voice your opinions to things that matter to to our community. It means a lot to all of us sitting Absolutely. up here to see that. I mean, we'd, we'd rather see this room full than just sparsely populated. And thank you so much. And all the people on Zoom also, thanks for hanging in there with all of our rhetoric that we go through. But we're, we're trying to do what we think is best mm -hmm. for the residents of Dearborn Heights. And thank you all for participating. Sure. Thank you. Any other announcements? Oh, are we doing announcements? We're yes. gonna, anything else from the council members? I assume they all spoke. So, announcements. Go ahead, council members. All right. On uh, nine twenty seventh, which is a Wednesday, the E Course Creek will have their meeting six p.m. And then on the twenty eighth, we have a very important election forum. It'll, we'll have a moderator, and all the candidates that are running for city council will be there, and we'll we'll take questions from the audience as well. And that's for South Dearborn Heights Civic Association sponsoring. It will be at 6.30 as opposed to our normal starting time because we got a lot to do. And both of these are at 3335 South Beach Daily, Dearborn Heights at the Westwood Community Admin Building. So please come to those. Okay, thank you. Any other announcements from administration? Mike? Okay, hello. Hold on. hello, Council Chair and Mayor. Just want to talk about a couple of items. First off, this Saturday, September 16th, from 1 to 4 p.m. at Carolyn Candy Library, we will be having this year's open house. This yes. year's event will feature a magic show, inflatable obstacle course, games, children's crafts and activities, free books, refreshments, mobile health unit, and a free tin can raffle from our generous donors. Uh, should be a blast, so come on out. I would also like to promote a craft program that we have been doing uh, that has a pickup or a deliverable to your house. Uh, it's our 5 to 10 crafting program with Venus and Eileen. It involves a pre-made craft and a YouTube video uh, online on how to assemble that craft. It's easy, it's simple. Want to get away from playing with the phones, if only for a few minutes, or want to get your kids away from that? Give them that activity. Uh, give them an alternative with a simple family craft activity. If you have a suggestion for a craft, feel free to let us know. 
Uh, thanks to Councilman Tom Wenzel, Treasurer Lisa X. Clayton, and everyone else in the administration for your feedback and participation in our activities. Uh, that's all for now. Thanks for your time, and see you at the library. Thanks, Mike. Thank, Thank you. you, Mike. Thank you. You got to do radio, Mike. I keep telling you that. You got to do radio. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Is that okay? okay. So should uh, Leslie. You should do radio as well. Should I? Oh, okay. Well, she's got um, a TV. I'm speaking Very as the president of Thrive by Any Means Necessary or TMN. We are a local nonprofit that um, is issuing a save the date for our second annual Friendsgiving event, which is in partnership with the City of Dearborn Heights and the Parks and Rec Department. We, uh, we're hoping to do it at the Richard A. Young Center again this year, but we're waiting for a finalization from Kim. But at the event, we're going to provide free Thanksgiving meals, clothes, toiletries, toys, and more to those in need. Um, this year, we're also fundraising for the D7 Dads Club, the Dearborn Heights Panthers, the Annapolis High School PTO, and our local food pantry. Um, we'll be posting the sponsorship and partnerships next week, and the event is scheduled for Saturday, November the 18th from 5 to 8 p.m., um, the other announcement is for the Dearborn Heights Community Pantry. Um, it's reopening the refrigerator very soon, and it's looking for more support from the community to keep it running. The pantry is stored at 23469 Annapolis Street. It's open 24-7 for donations as well as for you to shop for items. Uh, we'll be having an informational session on Sunday, September the 17th at 2 p.m. via Zoom. Um, this information is posted on the Dearborn Heights Pantry Facebook page. Um, we would love for everybody to join us and keep this uh, project running. Thank you. It works. Thank you. It always. Council Chair, yes. um, I just wanted to speak uh, on the, the pantry, Dearborn Heights pantry that uh, Leslie's in, involved with, uh, probably pretty, pretty strongly involved because it's in her backyard. <laughs> and she lives on the corner. And uh, anytime I get the chance, I donate something. But I was just uh, today or yeah, it was today, I believe, and I wanted to, donate something that needed to be refrigerated and I stopped by there and I noticed the refrigerator wasn't working I said did you you need a refrigerator she said no we're we don't have enough donations that need to be refrigerated to keep the refrigerator running so we need more fresh food donations that need to be refrigerated so she can we can turn the refrigerator back on and I'll tell you that that pantry is is so cool you, you put an item some items in there and maybe a couple hours or next day you go back and that's all, it's all gone and it's it's so useful in our community, and she's doing a great job. And if anybody else is involved with it besides you, you know them too. You know, I'm, I'm sure your family is. You know, <laughs> but the whole community, you know, it's it's, it's really a cool thing. And it's and my hat goes off to you. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Any come on up. Hassan Jamal, Community and Economic Development Director, City of Dearborn Heights. Uh, Mr. Chair, can you please uh, reread uh, Resolution 9K? The motion? The yes. motion, you mean? Yes. The one, the really long one that you typed up? <laughs> no, that's the short one. Or the third may. Mo did it. You do? Yes. You. I've got, okay, so I could read it for you quickly because yes. I read it, but. Item 9A is Chief of Staff Hernandez. I'm going to do this fast, if you don't mind. <clears throat> Chief of Staff Hernandez, BLN, ARPA, Task Order. No, 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 no. No, no. 9K. 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 Okay. 9K. Give me one. Okay, here we go. CEDD Director Jamal Agreement with Wade Trim for improvements to Heather Lane Park and Van Houten Park. Manhattan. At the Dearborn Heights City Council approved the agreements between City and Wade Trim for engineering, design, and contract administration for improvements to Heather Lane Park for a cost not to exceed $67,500 and Van Houten Park for a cost not to exceed $67,500 and authorize the mayor and clerk sign their agreements on behalf of the city. In addition, authorize the mayor and controller or clerk to sign the necessary warrants and the treasurer to issue payments according to the city charter. Chapter 8, Section 8.9 is outlined in Item 9K. Thank you. Can you please enter that to the record so that will be the final motion? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good evening. Well, Tony just give me Harry. one quick second. Sure. Is there any other announcements from administration? 
Okay. So now before we go to you, let, let's go ahead and, and, and make the announcement here. We're going to public comments at this particular point. Each person will have three minutes. Please state the city, street you live on, and of course your name. Uh, so next person up, come on up. Tony Camilleri, Midway, Dearborn Heights. It's ironic. Talking we were, to the microphone. It's ironic we were talking about the invoice from, I believe it's the Golf Hang on course. one second, one second. I'm sorry, I don't mean to pause you. You have three minutes here? Yes. Go ahead. I'm going to restart your time, so go ahead. It's okay. It's ironic we're talking about the invoice from the Warren Valley Golf Course and the situation with the law firm. I believe it was Schenck. Uh Four years ago plus, our late former mayor, Dan Paleco, was making the same argument to city council that this law firm was playing both sides of the fence. And I believe that was his main argument about the forensic audit, not that he did not want the forensic audit, but change law firms. I strongly urge you to get rid of this law firm. My, my opinion, throw them out of the city. Case closed. Uh, can I ask how much that invoice was for offhand? The total amount between the, the including the ones that are in question, $7,017. It's ironic that he is representing the Asa brothers, who still owes three contractors, me is one of them, over $13,000 for work that has already been done at, at the banquet center. One contractor is still owed 3000 out of the 5000 One is still owed 1000 and I am owed $9,100 in, in addition to $1,100 of equipment and tools that were stolen out of the banquet okay, center when okay. I was escorted out so by the police. So if you do me a favor, we're making, we're throwing around all kinds of accusations and it's not fair. The police were there. They these, I know. Uh, uh, let okay. me finish. So if there is something that's of concern, and I'll I respect that, that later date. take it to I'm the police or take it minutes. to the law. But no law, disrespect. I'm sorry, attorneys, but not here. That's Go fine. ahead. Um, it needs to be looked into. Uh, this law firm needs to be thrown out of this city. They cannot continue to represent both sides of the city. And again, I'm going to make it the same argument. That's the argument Dan Palacco brought to you people. And those council meetings were extremely, extremely violent. Not violent, but... Um, uh, thank you. Okay. And uh, that's all I'm going to say on this issue. The okay. next issue, I voiced my opinion in a text message to Mr. Baydoun and voiced my disgust of some of the comments he was making towards me, lies about me stating about a supposed closed-door session meeting. Okay, check your facts. Don't lie about me again. Unlike you, my facts are titanium, not glass marble. Okay, glass not, not, we don't need that language around okay. here. Thank don't you. Don't use me as a stepping stone for your election. And trust me, I would not. Okay. I would lose if I did that. Well, hopefully you will. Yeah. Well, I hope. Well, your hopes won't come true. I'm done. All right. That's it. Council Chair, I'm going to respond. Uh, okay. But, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to respond. Remember when you do. I know, Council okay. Chair. Listen, I, I've been around the park. All right. But so when you do, you know what that look. Means. You know, there may be some type of political motive here, that you know, the, clearly this gentleman doesn't like the Issa brothers, right? Uh, but I can tell you right now that the Issa brothers have several businesses in the city of Dearborn Heights, and every single business that they've touched thrives. Uh, whatever the dispute between him and the Issa brothers is, that's between him and that's between him, the courts, small claim courts, the attorneys. Keep it there. The discussion that he's discussing about me is something that happened in a closed session that was leaked from that closed session, which I've had this conversation with him. And and Check your yeah, it, it was leaked from that closed session, and this gentleman now knows it. So there should be an investigation on not just on if he's going to claim the Issa brothers, an investigation story. should be happening on him as well. Okay, okay. that's all. Thank you. Story. All right. Hello, Hi. City Street, please. Sue Kaminsky. Hang on one second. <clears throat> Go ahead. Sue Kaminsky, Amboy Street, Dearborn Heights. Um, I wanted to thank you guys for um, tabling that bill and getting more information. I really respect your decision on that. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is with the kids and the crossings um, for school and the people that are working very hard at this, we also are short crossing guards. And I know the city is raising the pay for that, but 
it's another problem that we have and we need crossing guards for those kids that are crossing at Beach Daily, at Warren. Um, Annapolis is crazy. I used to live on Annapolis. They drive like nuts. So we have to be very, very in tune with the times when our kids are going to school and traffic and safety. And unfortunately, with our police force down still, we don't have all the patrols and we can't fill those positions because people just aren't applying, um, regular citizens. So just be careful because our kids deserve to be able to go to school and be safe getting there. I agree. That's okay. it. Thank you. Thanks, Sue. Next person up. Also, Chair. Uh, so somebody misleading residents, uh, we want to answer that. Sure, no problem. Come on up, Director. As always, misleading residents. Are we, are we, is there three minutes on this? No, no. I'm just I just want to respond. Fine, fine. Um, you know, obviously, if someone has a concern, you know, about the safety of our children, I just want to respond and let um, people know what, what's, what we're doing to, to make things better. Yeah. Uh, I'm Director Swope, uh, Patrol Operations. Um, police operations for the Dearborn Heights Police Department. Um, so we, we know that, that the safety of our children um, is the utmost importance to us, okay? Um, since the beginning of school, um, we have um, really did a great, you know, we did a great job at making sure that these crossings are filled by police officers. Um, myself, I went out there and did them. Um, Director Vanderplow. Uh, we've been out there to, and we made sure that, that these crossings are taken care of. Uh, we currently have a, um, a hiring plan for crossing guards. Um, I think we're doing a good job. I think we have five new ones. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's plenty of crossing guards, okay? We got, um, we got a, a pay increase um, to $17 uh, approved. And um, we're doing a good job. We have Lieutenant Paulus at the police department. He's, he's now in charge of all the crossing guards to make sure that there's not a crossing that goes um, unfilled. Um, so there's nothing more important to us than our children. And we're doing a great job um, to make sure that, that these kids are crossing safely. Uh, Warren and Beach Daily is a, it's a dangerous crossing, no doubt about it. Um, we're, uh, we have police officers out there. Um, and we're going to make sure that, that our kids um, can, can get to school safely. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And if there's any concerns about crossing, <clears throat> crossing guards, let's say people don't show up or, or we need more help at a certain location, we can't be everywhere. So I would suggest that maybe, you know, someone contact, um, contact myself or Director Vanderplow or Lieutenant Paulus, and we'll make sure that um, we actually send police cars, police supervisors, and make sure that those gaps are filled until we can get them um, Filled up with civilians. Thank you. You're welcome. And Council Thank Chair, you, Director. Also, a misleading comment that was made. Uh, we have a lot of applicants. We've been they've been doing a lot of interviews, and uh, we do have a lot of applicants that we're interviewing, and there's several that will be getting offers. So that comment was misleading. So a lot of people are applying for the police department. Okay, Council so Chair. Good to hear. You know, I look at just to respond. To, um, I'm glad that they're doing something. Because we this crossing guard issue, we've been talking about it. You know, myself being a crossing guard for a couple of years, and we haven't had any action basically taken on, you know, a program to hire crossing guards. And just doing some quick math here, if, at seventeen dollars an hour, and I believe you get an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon, um, at five days a week, four weeks a month that that's like six hundred and eighty dollars a month you can make being a crossing guard i volunteer so i don't make anything but <laughs> if you if you're if you need some income the hours are great the pay is good i mean six hundred eighty dollars that's a good car payment or someone's you know house payment you know if you owned your house for quite a while so <laughs> that's nothing to sneeze at six hundred eighty dollars a month so let's get them applicants out there let's get let's get more applicants than we need crossing guards please Thank you. You might have sold awesome. me with that 680 a month. Um, All right. <laughs> Rachel, me too. Rachel LaPointe, Merrick Street, Dearborn Heights. Um, uh, on the topic of the schools and the safety stuff, I uh, was dropping off my kid at uh, the middle school in D7, and 
the principal was out there helping direct traffic, they could really use some gear like stop handheld stop signs or maybe some traffic cones. So I'm not sure Director Swope or Director Vanderplow or who that would be, the SRO perhaps for the district to talk to about maybe getting some like equipment, at least for the school mm -hmm. staff too. Um, the Firefighters Chili Cookoff was amazing. I want to thank them for another great event. Um, it was especially meaningful to me um, a little bit. My husband's grandfather passed away um, the week before and Chris actually wasn't able to be at the chili cook-off because he was at the funeral. Um, but his grandpa was a firefighter in Salem, Massachusetts, um, Norman LaPointe. And I guess he did a lot to write fire codes for the whole country. So um, it was, it's, strange how much I felt like part of the family just seeing the pictures from the firefighters in Salem at the funeral and then being able to be at the cook-off I don't know it was really good I really appreciate the sort of family feel our firefighters bring to the whole community um, and I just want to thank them for all of that um, well while I was sitting here and you were discussing some of these things today I looked up a couple of things because I happen to have my printout of the minutes from last year um, you guys actually, the it, I can let you guys know later the motions if you want to, but the legal rates were set in 2022. It doesn't have the rates on here. But I was more interested to notice that you guys terminated any relationships that the city had with the Schenck and Bruch, I'm not sure how to say that, law firm in, uh, I believe it was March or February of last year, and said that they were no longer to work with the city. So I'm not sure what went on with that, but um, you guys might want to look into that. Um, I'm also disappointed because I don't think any of you read the backup this week. The backup for the Wade Trim proposal for the school crossings <laughs> specifically says exclusions from phase one, which is what this proposal was, survey or engineering services for specific design projects. Unless I'm reading that entirely wrong, and it mentioned it a few other times in the backup, it said that design services were excluded. It is only for data collection at the school locations. It is for them to send out people to count the students, to see what needs to be done, and then to bring those recommendations back to you guys. You voted on it thinking it was to get the blueprints. That's not what it's for. I don't think any of you read the backup and I'm honestly disappointed. Council Chair, that's one of the reasons, because I talked to uh, Rachel before, that's one of the reasons I wanted to specify exactly what it was for. I mean, can the director come up? Is that what, I mean, to, just to clarify this, I don't want to make anyone look bad or you know, just so we can clear this up. Okay, for the purposes that we, um we're selecting the services for um, blueprint is not the right terminology. I have to say that it's, it's not an actual. You're not building a street or a, a high rise here. Uh, what we're providing is a bid document to do what we showed in the pictures. So the consultant is going to provide the the things that I show in the pictures: the crossing, the lighting, the push buttons, um, and then the how far. So code compliant. These things before they get built, they're going to be code compliant. The distance, how far the the, the crossing has to be, um, the ramp uh, going to the sidewalk, uh, the um, um, you know that kind of stuff. That's what they're pro they're providing. So it will be a bit document. May not be an actual blueprint. We're not building the structure. We're doing. The um, um, uh, the crossing. And that's what they're in charge of. So you're saying that you're, this is this study is going to furnish all the specifications for bid someone document. to bid on it 100. percent They'll know what it is, and it doesn't just. They're going I mean, to Rachel, do you have a you have another comment? I read, I read the back. Okay. Well, this is the way I took it, guys, and I'm going to tell you how I took it. I took it as, and I asked you about the TIA, and that was to do with specs. But what I also read was as an engineer. If that sign goes up in a certain spot, you need to make sure that if that sign falls, that sign is now city property and see we can be held liable. So when, I, when, I, when I'm looking at the blueprints of what we're doing, if there's a sign that's being put into the ground, you know, how easy is it for it to be ripped out of the ground by a kid? Uh, and, you know, so, so that's what I, I'm taking out of this. I'm not taking it as what TIA was supposed to do nine months ago. 
because this we paid is, for that already. This proposal is to provide bid documents to facilitate the construction of what you saw before you. I can assure. Well, that, ma'am. Okay. Th this nothing, is what it's for. The audience, That's what it's for. Const you know, contrary to what I, um, and, and so the contract is with a consulting engineering firm to do just that. Provide bid documents to build what we just indicated. Will they be doing the studies that she mentioned, flow and things like that nature, or was that done already? I, I already indicated earlier, so there will be a traffic, a, a, a pedestrian count, so we know where the best location is. So there will be, and that's that was another reason why we had to wait I for time school out, Mr. opening. D, time out. Best location. Every location with children is the best. You're not listening. So you have, I'm going to give you one example. I have a school right across the street, right? Yeah. So the, the, the address of that school is on Hess, right? That's the front. That's not what is being used where, so you go where, you, where kids are being picked up, it's not on Hess. So what, the, what this consultant is going to do okay. is study the location and figure out where these things need to be placed, not look at address. That's what they're going to provide. Bid documents so we can build those things. Contractor is going to just do what you ask them to do. So you want me to put a crossing? You want me to put a light? Where? That's what the consultant is going to give us. So, Mr. Deeb, can I ask you a question? Sure. What is TIA doing? Okay, so traffic studies, this is what I've asked them to do. Traffic studies, um, um, crash counts, things of that nature, you know, location-wise. But they're not an engineering firm. They're a consultant. They're, they do traffic consultancy. This is this is a bid document. I'm going to provide bid documents. Look, you know, I mean, uh, you go out to bid. You have to give the bidder something to bid. But I think I think, I think I think the only reason it may be questioned is in the uh, initial proposal, it said multiple times um, um, the the company Wade Trim, the consultant Wade Trim, having completed the initial survey and assisted our staff in the needs assessment, is uniquely. And this is a key point. Mm -hmm is uniquely qualified to complete the design work to facilitate this project. And then further it says, this project consists of the design development of the construction documents right. to facilitate the work. So there is design elements in there. Right. It is not a blueprint. That's what it says. No, it's not a blueprint. So it's right. not a blueprint. It is, it is design. It's documents. It's bid documents. These are the bid documents that we go out to bid based okay. on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Any other public comments? <laughs> Council Chair, I was just using the blueprint uh, as an analogy as far as, you know, a yeah. plan to go by. Right. And, you know, that's not an actual blueprint. Hello. City um, Street name, please. Um, it's Janoon, uh, Whitefield Street, Dearborn Heights. Okay, so first of all, I'm not sure what schools Ms. Kaminsky was referring to, but I will say just from my personal experience this year, and no bias here at all, I'm not biased towards Officer Shammy whatsoever, but he has been, I did see him at Riverside when there was not a crossing guard crossing the students, and he's been outside of his car every day directing traffic at the high school. So I will, I mean, we're going on two weeks and he's still doing it, and I asked him, so when are you going to stop doing this? And he said, I'm doing it all year, and I was like, okay, I'm going to hold you to it, you know, but he has been out there, you know, taking care of the kids. So um, my question, the reason I was initially coming up here was um, with my deal, is it my deal? Is that the yes. name? Um, By the way, a little side note, my is it M-I yes. is in Michigan. Yep, yep. So just real quickly, I went on to the state's website just to see. Um, I know that other you know, school districts as well use use this um, to contract, you know, bids or bid things out. Um, when I looked at like the sub, like the sections that you can, let's just say I need, um, let's just say I need carpet. You might only have one company that the state gets a, you know, has a contract with. Now we pay a small fee to the state to be able to, you know, be a part of this program to, to use their contracts. Um, but you don't have, you don't always have a lot of companies that you can get a bid from. So I honestly, in the beginning, I was like, oh, great. You're, you know, you're, you were using the state's contracts to get a better deal. But that's, have you guys ever looked at it? Well, don't forget, one of the reasons that a lot of companies probably do not you bid can, on it. You can pause my time. Yeah, it'll, it'll be fine. <laughs> one of the reasons that they're not, a lot of companies probably do not bid on it, because keep in mind, low <laughs> bids. 
So I they're not going to have high but profits. That's my, but that's what I'm, what I'm trying to say is we're not always getting the best deal. Like if I look at carpet and tiles installation, there's one company under there. If I look at smart, you know, um, phones, you know, you, if, if you look at even the um, car companies, the, the dealerships that are under there, you, you have maybe five or six and they're not all even that local. So I just, initially I was thinking great, but then I started looking at the, the companies and there's just, there's not that many on there. Mm -hmm. There are so many subsection, you know, sections that you can click, like literally for just every little thing. And then there's not that many companies under, some of them have eight maybe I saw, but some of them you have maybe one, two, three. So that's why you're not getting three bids. If you're only using my deal, you're getting sometimes just that one bid. So maybe not the best thing. Maybe okay. not the best Good point. Thing. Thank you, ma'am. You had Next 15 up. more seconds. You don't want them? <laughs> <laughs> Three minutes. Let me know when you're ready. I got four minutes, actually. Double check with your chair. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm going to need the whole four minutes. Leslie, though. you got 20. Go ahead. What? Period. Let's do it. I gave you four minutes and four seconds. Go for right. it. Go. Four seconds to say her name. My name is Leslie Winless, Annapolis Street, Dearborn Heights, Michigan. I'm not a rookie, and I don't have a question. I ain't looking for immediate feedback, so do not interrupt me. I took a short break to prioritize my mental health and faith. At least that's the official statement that I put out. But the truth is I went crazy dealing with the racist politics at work and in this city. I came back to remind you that the power is and always has been with the people. It should be people over politics. I don't trust the government and I never will. But while I'm on God's green earth, I will hold it and you accountable. We are all making history, but is it even being properly recorded or supported? Nope. Whether you choose to support the change that is coming or not, I promise you, history will not be repeating itself on our watch. Either get with the progress or perish with the past. I refuse to compromise when the future of families in this city depends on this relentlessness. Open your eyes, grab your glasses, because between the 100 year flood, floods, COVID-19 pandemic, and the extreme division, race, gender, books, you name it. Whatever hell you do or don't believe in, it's already on this earth. There's only one real judge, and you will have to answer for your decisions or the lack thereof in the matters of social justice and equity. For the city council members and the administration that are already servant leaders, keep it up. This smoke ain't for you. For the city council members who sit silent, newsflash. The whole point of being a public leader is for your voice to be heard. I don't respect a coward that takes a seat that represents the voice of the people, then turns around and plays mute to safely ride the fence. To the wannabe local activists that you have let run a muck up in here for months, the revolution ain't at this podium or in your little three minutes of public comment thing. It's in these streets where we are actively feeding, clothing, and housing people in need. It's in these all-night policy writing meetings. It's in these well-thought-out and executed speeches. Our community is winning. But the question is, are you playing for the winning team? Or are you on the bench yelling about what the coach ain't getting right? Or are you losing? And you the crying team talking about the refs, what the refs didn't do instead of your own performance? Or are you a Twitter thug where your keyboard does all the action for you? Wait, what was that you asked me, Councilman Whistle? Leslie, why are you angry? How can we help? Thank you. I'm, I'm actually prepared to answer those questions. First of all, I'm not angry. I rarely get angry. I'm passionate. Then a mother, ah, uh, got you, Dave. <laughs> I, just wanted, I just wanted you to catch my drift, since you appear to allow profanity and disrespect these days. I feel sorry for Chief Hart and whatever three officers you got left working. Speaking of work, here's a list of demands for today. Figure out the apparent rocket science behind fundraising in the city and allotment for money for committees. If you serve on the committee, show the F up. Be president of all of our school districts equally, especially Westwood. Stay on top of these crosswalks and signs. This should not take this long. Increase the pay for our crossing guards beyond $17 for the work they do. And our city frontline employees, they qualify for welfare for crying out sake, for crying out loud. 
probably support the Dearborn Heights Panthers who are fundraising following their name change. Help the community pantry and any other resident-led initiatives. Start listening to, supporting, and echoing the voice of these residents. I don't thank any of you for your time today. You should be thanking us for ours. Thank you. Thank you. Next up. Margaret King, Mayfair Street, Dearborn Heights. Hang on one second. It's going to hard to come back from that. <laughs> Hang on. I love you, Leslie. Yeah. Let's give, we're going to give Leslie one more round of applause on that one. That was passionate. We can tell how passionate you are. I mean, my ear's still ringing. So, Why are you so ahead. angry? <laughs> passionate, not angry. Go ahead. Margaret King, Mayfair Street, Dearborn Heights. Um, I'm glad that the design or whatever got approved today. But I'm still here, still asking for us to do something today. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, today. Kids are walking to school. Kids are you know, riding their bikes back and forth, whatever the case is. Something can something be done today. Um, also, too, no Michigan school right here with MDOT, wonderful book, um, tells you a 1,000 feet for school signs. Um, I've brought that up before. But just to reiterate it, um, cement in the ground, Pound the sign in a thousand feet. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Um, so, what's our next move after we get back from this? Um, the approval is the bid going out, and how soon can we see boots on the ground? I know Mo asked it again, but I'm going to reiterate it. These are children's lives, and they need to be saved. Another side note I know I'm everywhere, and I apologize. I have a friend of mine that works at Riverside Middle School. She messaged me and she told me, thank you for what I was doing because there's an officer out there at Riverside Middle School crossing these kids. Thank you to the Dearborn I don't know Department. if she's going to hear this, but I love you, Krista. Um, but reflective tape for now on, like, I mean, we did it before. Can we do it to put it on the stop signs? Joey was killed at night. This is important, and I'm going to hold this dear and close to my heart because children are our future. I want to see change, and I want to see it now. Thank you. And thank you for your activism, as a lot of you guys in here. Thank you. Anybody else in the audience that would like to make a public comment? Come on up. I'm speaking as a resident, Tom Wenzel, 2 Lane Street. Um, boy, that's a tough act to follow there. You know. <laughs> but she hit, uh, hit it on the head, a lot of her points. I mean, it, it, you know, it's about time that uh, our city is represented by its population, and, you know, I'm, I'm hopefully pretty soon we'll have an African-American woman sitting up there in one of these days. That'd be, uh, that'd be awesome. And, uh, but... Um, I spoke earlier about the Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, month of September, and suicide hits so many people. I'm sure all of us in this room have some kind of close interaction with someone who has committed suicide or know someone, and uh, it's it's more more prevalent than we know. Uh, our 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 military veterans have one of the highest rates of suicide in any category in the country. And uh, the thing that I've done a lot of research lately and found out, you know, one of the things that was said was they didn't have anyone to talk to. And I went online and I checked on the, uh, about between 10 and 12, 15 uh, telephone numbers to call for suicide prevention. And almost every one of them was you leave your number. And the only one that I got a, a person, a, li a real live person, was the... Uh, dial 988 and if anyone out there is contemplating harming himself in any way or if you know of someone that might be in that situation you know 988 is the number to call and one of the things I've talked to a lot of people about this and they said the best thing that we could do is listen because most of these people have a problem and they try to talk to someone and we're all too busy to listen to them and unfortunately, it ends up in a bad way. So call 988 if you have any issues at all with committing suicide or and know of anybody that has a problem. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else that would like to 
Come on up. Good job, Tom. Thank you, Tom. That's your minute? No, it's three minutes. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you four seconds on top of that three minutes. Okay. I'm actually doing that for everybody because it's right. saying your name, street address, and it's about four seconds. I did it for Leslie. Sorry, Nigel. Really good. I forgot. Okay, my name is... Uh, what? Oh, my name is uh, Ron Frenzy, live on Fairwood in Dearborn Heights, and I'd like to talk about two things. One's building permits and also tree removal permits. Now, when a person needs work on his house, a person may call a carpenter to do woodwork or a plumber to do pipe work or a cement laborer to do cement work or an electrician to do work with wires or a roofer for roofs. Now, that's all a good thing because they're building something that's going to last. Maybe it's, maybe it's a porch in front or back of your house or a garage, but those structures are going to last for days and months and years and decades, and that's why... That's why you, the city sends an inspector there to see if the job was done right, because that structure is going to be there for, for a long time. However, however, switching, what about tree removals? So I believe for tree removals, I'm calling, I'm really here for, on behalf of my two neighbors that have sycamore trees, uh, that for tree removals, in my opinion, no, no permit should be needed to cut down these trees because after they are cut down, they are gone forever and they will never come back. There is nothing to inspect because they're gone forever. There's no safety issues present because they're gone forever. There's no tree work, cement work, pipe work, wires, because there's no inspection needed because they're not here. So how can a person pay a fee for something that doesn't exist? It's common sense. So when the tree is cut down, they take it away, and there's nothing there. So I was, so I'm here to see if the council could suspend the permits to cut down a tree, because my two neighbors are are about 90 to 95 percent satisfied that they'll use their own money to cut down a sycamore tree between the sidewalk and curb, but they just can't take the 450 dollars to pay for air. That's what you have, right? Just say yes. Because when, yeah. when a tree is cut down, there's nothing there. It just doesn't make sense. So it's just something to, to consider. Okay. No problem. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ron. Anybody else in the audience that would like to make a public comment? Okay. Council so Chair. Yes. I, I, on the tree removal thing, it, it, um, it brought um, to my mind, people that a couple of people have been talking to, they had a sidewalk replacement program going on right now, and uh, I went out and looked at several sidewalks that are, are being damaged or lift lifted by tree roots on city property. Where, where's the city stand on that? Is that still the the residents' responsibility to fix that sidewalk, even though it's a tree? Because this one resident said that they, in the last ten years, they replaced the sidewalk, uh, nice. and then they had it lifted sections lifted to match it they had it ground down and now it's a fourth time that they have to replace it in 10 years I, i'm not saying i agree but i'm just telling you the ordinance says yes it would be the resident that would have to pay for it you know i, I have to admit i kind of like the sycamore uh poem that was just given uh what's that matter just you know it'll be gone and i think maybe we can make some type of amendment if somebody wants to remove that sycamore tree which mind you guys the sycamore trees in the city they're deadly they really are. They're destroying homes. They're destroying animals. There's, I mean, I want a tree in front of my house. I just, I'm glad I don't got a sycamore tree because I would never clean up my yard. It would be every sing, it would be in every single, it's a full-time job to clean the sycamore tree in front of your house. The, I, I, you know what? Just remove them. And the fee is something, you're, you're, you're charging people $450 for air. There's nothing there after the tree. Is the permit $450 to get a tree permit? 450 yes. We're working on it, though. We're working on it. I mean, you can't just let anybody cut down any tree they want. Then yeah. we, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't have right. any trees. Right. I, I, any? Would, I would just add, I, I did have a meeting Friday with Angela and some other community members to look at really what to do with the ordinance and how we can improve some things. It's new. Right? The ordinance came out last year, and the city clerk's office, we pulled it on Friday, but we are working on that, and uh, starting with the sycamores, but looking at the whole thing and the tree fund where money would go into. So we have started working on it. Like I've said before, Council Chair, that, you know, one tree provides enough oxygen for four people. So, you know, you've got to be careful how many trees you cut down. Okay. Uh, 
Ned Apigian, Rosetta Street, Dearborn Heights. The issue of the importance of having a tree permit, I believe in Dearborn Heights, the permit is $60, unless it's gone up the last time I looked at it. I, the issue is, if you don't have a permit, then people go around cutting down trees and uh, for no reason at all. No, that's not acceptable. Uh, uh, exactly. So you need a permit, or you're in danger of being fined, supposedly, whatever those numbers are. The city has to hire somebody, presumably a knowledgeable person. When you make a request, he goes and look. Do you have a storm damaged tree? Yes, you can remove it at no fine, or you don't have to fund the fund to replace trees. Or it's diseased, it has to be removed. That takes time and money. And after the tree is gone, somebody has to go to see if the tree is gone. Whose word are you going to take? That's a good point. The tree crazy people who want to cut them down on Friday when you're not working and Saturday and Sunday. I get the most nervous feeling when I hear saws going off in my neighborhood. Oh, yeah. You got a lot of trees. And tree those trees could be stumped. So somebody has to prove that the stump dust and removal is gone. And that the thing has been seeded right and grassed over. That's why you need a permit. Thank and you. it costs you more than $60 to make sure that's done. Thank you. Madam Clerk, is there anybody on Zoom? Okay, nobody on Zoom. Motion nobody to adjourn. In the audience. Motion to adjourn by Councilwoman Beydoun. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Breyer. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And, and you have a good night.